right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Blindside Blitz. I am Jim McPhee, and Joe is there going remotely with us tonight. Joe, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? What's up, Blitz Nation? Let's get it, get to it, man. We're going to talk some football. We're going to give you your dosage for the week because this is the Blitz Nation, and we're here to save you guys. You can do us a huge favor, though. Since you're tuning in, make sure you head over to YouTube. Go to Grumblings Media right there. Drop that subscription down there. Hit that button for us. Hit the likes up for us as well. And don't forget to comment down below because we are live. We are the best NFL talk show that is the most interactive for you guys out there. So we are going to react to your comments. We are going to answer your questions. And that's what it's all about is getting feedback from, from each other and uh, giving everybody differing opinions. But don't stop there. You can also check out our website, grumblingsmedia.com, and you can check even more content over there, sports, political, entertainment, all that stuff we have over there for you too. Make sure you drop a follow. Make sure you give your reviews. And don't forget to keep supporting, guys. We thank you guys so much. Mm, absolutely. Joe, what, what a week. You know, just again, oh. week one is over, and then week two, <laughs> totally different. Blows it all up, right, Joe? Adam Bomb. Adam Bomb. Like, it, just when you think you started to have an idea of, like, what teams were and where they were headed, oh, surprise, there was a large amount of teams that surprised everybody on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, even – even on Monday. <laughs> yeah, even on Monday. Even on Monday. That's right. Uh, Kirk Cousins is going to get it done here at prime time every prime now and time. then. That's right. <laughs> but Saquon, a big drop, too, in that game, though, too. Oh, uh, pickle. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, Joe, I mean, uh, one of the teams, I think, is just the Cardinals. Oh, my goodness. Again, just oh. because the you saw in week one really – you know, come out with that huge lead again. They do the same exact thing this week, yeah. but they're able to, you know, hold it, you know, yeah. and not let the, you know, the team come back, you know? So what's going on with the Cardinals? I mean, it's crazy with them, you know, how they've turned it around. I know. And, and it's been one surprise after another because week one, a lot of people, us included thought we kind of wrote off the Cardinals because of the lack of talent on the roster in terms of, you know, names in terms of production, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We thought that they were lacking so much that they might not even be able to overcome that. But I got to say, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like we kind of pinpointed Kyler Murray and, you know, now their, their new draft pick and Marvin Harrison Jr. We thought that was it for their offense. And obviously James Connors there and they did draft Trey Benson, the, the rookie running back. So they got a little bit of town on offense, but we thought defense was going to kill them. Like we thought they were going to give up point after mm-hmm. point after point. And the Cardinals weren't going to be able to keep up and, and outscore outscore team. So it, to our surprise, here are the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And they and and Kyler Murray said it before the season even started himself and said, Hey, don't don't count us out. And here they are, you know, so they, they surprised, they surprised the hell out of me last week, uh, yep. beating the Rams. And I, I, I'm just like, I can't figure it out. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I know. And we're going to talk about the Rams just a little bit, but, um, Again, a few different upsets. How about the, um, the Minnesota Vikings too, over top of the, the, 49ers 49ers um again looking a bit banged up here Debo's injured once again and that secondary for me I mean mm-hmm. um you know Joe uh, you, know, you know Nick Bosa is injured too as well um but that mm-hmm. secondary seems like they're really struggling this year we've talked about that interior you know they're missing a few different guys here mm-hmm. uh we talked about it in, in the preseason and things like that where that might make a difference which it is to an extent too because it looks like right. Nick Bosa is having to do a whole lot out there Fred Warner's still, you know, the man there. But again, when he goes back to the secondary, it seems like there's a lot of confusion or just uh, uh, getting overmatched in the back end for me. For what yeah, you, know, you know, you know, what's funny too is because you wait to see somebody step up on a roster, like even like names that you're not familiar with or whatever, like that. Uh, I think his last name is Lenore, something like that. Like the corner for the Niners, mm-hmm. that dude is lights out right now. In the beginning of the season, he's playing like at such a high level that Mm -hmm. he's rivaling a lot of the top corners in the league right now. And I understand it's only two weeks, so we have to wait and see how it progresses. But uh, there are some bright spots on that Niners team. But then again, they they do have holes. 
and we like you just brought it up the d line you got nick bosa and everybody else you know javon hargrave isn't getting any younger he's made a couple good plays this season so far but not he just doesn't have enough of the supporting cast is what wait basically what it comes down to and then offensively it seems like they're trying to they're not playing their game like in other words the offense is trying to have to score more points and try to outscore teams and it, it's not working because that's just not them that's not their mold that's not their mentality so mm -hmm. uh, they like to, to sustain long drives they like to score at the end and just kind of keep the ball moving but not have to outscore teams so i think it's been working against them you know now and, and mm -hmm. we've seen this past week which honestly was a surprise to me i didn't think they were going to lose that game yeah. and, and and here 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 you go like this is mm -hmm. the nfl like the, the, every single week we struggle to find little details and try to figure out like the different equations of who can win who should beat who and in the end we come away surprised a few times yeah. Yeah. And, and there you go. Minnesota again, you know, really cool. putting it on, uh, Sam Darnold looks pretty good so far. Um, and again, you know, getting that deep ball out there to, to Justin Jefferson too, but Jefferson now, you know, banged up. So a lot of key injuries just week two in the NFL right now, it's where some of these guys are going down on I IR early. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, he's not going on IR. He's mm -hmm. at, in fact, he's, he might be able to play this week. Uh, right. So they said it was a quad injury, nothing major. It's kind of minor. Uh, they're going to evaluate day to day through practice and all that. But uh, for all the Justin Jefferson fantasy owners out there, mm -hmm. don't be too concerned because at least it's not major. Right. Um, the other thing is that, you know, the Vikings beating the Niners to me. And I, we said it last week, like we had this talk about this game. I wouldn't have been surprised if they won. Because I really do believe that this Vikings team is better than people think. And Sam Darnold is playing at a much higher level than he ever has because he has that support, because he has a team that believes in him and an offense that he really, really plays well in. So Kevin O'Connell's done a, a great job with him so far, calling the plays, mixing it up. And Darnold is just flat out executing. Like this yeah. is the guy that the Jets wanted, but they gave up on him too early and didn't surround him with talent. So here, here are the Vikings. They have Darnold, yes, but you know what? They got talent around him. They believe in him, and he's executing. So the Vikings are on a roll right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, Joe. Um, and also one of the big ones, too, we're talking about upsets right now. The um, Your Vegas Raiders upsetting yeah. the, uh, the, oh the, 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 the Ravens. How about that? <laughs> people are shell-shocked out there. Dude, people? Fans are shell shocked. Like <laughs> honestly, like you have, I mean, every every team, every fan base has fans that are like kind of over the moon in love with their team so much where they think they're gonna win every single week, regardless. But I gotta tell you, looking at historically, Raiders traveling from West Coast to East Coast, mm -hmm. playing a one o'clock game, which to them is like playing at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. And then on top of that, you've got to face a team that a lot of people view as a playoff caliber team. That's a right. very tough, gritty, tough, uh, high pressure defense. Love to get after you. And then you got the the offense that is so tricky and so different with Lamar Jackson at the helm. You don't know if they're going to hand off the ball. Lamar's going to run himself, or he's going to throw it over the top. So, but what did we notice with that game? And I said the one thing that I think that'll keep the Raiders in the game is their defense. And if this doesn't prove to the NFL that this defense is for real, like one of the best, then I don't think anything will because this team just flat out outperformed the Ravens, like not offensively, but I think the defense, the mm -hmm. Raiders defense yeah. really held them in the game. And then they were able to make the plays count when needed, especially down the stretch. So yeah, I'm absolutely shocked that the Raiders pulled off the win and you know, Hey, and the, 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 the one thing I have to mention is Lamar Jackson, who is supposed to be the guy to help carry this Ravens offense is making mistake after mistake after mistake in mm -hmm. two weeks time. I know it's only two weeks, but yeah. there's still plenty of time, plenty of seasons for them to kind of figure it all out. But again, 
we I, I kind of went on a rant last week and said how much this is your MVP, right? This is the guy, the guy that can't make all the throws, and he proved mm-hmm. it yet again. He can't make all the throws. He can't hit the guys that are wide open, can't hit 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 those tight window throws, and it's crippling this Ravens offense. They got to figure something out. I think maybe getting Mark Andrews more involved would help, but um, we'll have to wait and see if they make minor changes uh, in week three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing that kind of kills you, especially come playoff time. And that's probably why, you know, they haven't had success in the playoffs getting, you know, past, you know, the chiefs and other uh, rivals there and and making it to the Super Bowl, Um, And also the, the Raiders, um, defense did hold him to only five attempts on running and 45 yards. I think it was 45 yards on the mm-hmm. ground. Uh, yeah. so that's a key. Cause if over, he has over like a hundred yards and things like that, that's when he's really, <laughs> you know, putting it to you and getting uh, elusive and making plays happen. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and also, it, go ahead. It, I mean, it also helps when you have two juggernaut defensive linemen that, right. that didn't allow him to breathe. Like Max Crosby had one hell of a day. Christian Wilkins, even though he didn't show up on the stat sheet a lot, he had so much pressure on Lamar. So it's like, and not, I know the key to beating Lamar, and we all know this, is to keep him in the pocket, Mm -hmm. make him throw the football, make him feel that pressure. The Raiders were honestly, like they were just coming after him. Like Mm -hmm. it's almost like their game plan wasn't to just like, oh, we're just going to like kind of, Hover, hover around him and don't allow him to run, but let him do whatever. So they, they just went attack him. So I was kind of surprised with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it ended up working out though, too, yeah. again, because what, if you look at last year's stats with um, Lamar Jackson, he had over 65 scrambles and that's when it's like mm-hmm. during when it was a called pass play that he just makes things happens with his legs to avoid the pressure and things like that and makes right. some plays. Uh, so that's key. You know, that's mm-hmm. key to, to a victory like that. Uh, yeah. One more upset. I would kind of say, I guess in, in an upset in my mind is the Detroit lions at home. <laughs> and um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers really put it yeah. on. I thought it was going to be a, a tight game. Uh, the Bucs, I knew they were going to be coming at them, but uh, Detroit just didn't look great at all. And Jared Goff, you know, you know, getting pressured and making some mistakes too as well. I mean, for Jared Goff and, and, and that team, like that was a close game though. Like it, it wasn't mm-hmm. like yeah. it was one-sided or anything like, like that. Blowout. And and, and Mm -hmm. this is kind of what we anticipated. Like we weren't going to be surprised with the Buccaneers one or the Lions one, but what we, but when it came down to it, this is a Lions team that has, has beaten the likes of the chiefs last season. You know, they've beaten some pretty daunting teams and for the Buccaneers to not only go into Detroit and pull out the win, that's got to send a message to everybody, especially if you're a Buccaneers fan, like, Hey, no, you know, we got a legit team too. and, And people are overlooking us. So, uh, Detroit Lions, they just got to collect themselves again. I mean, it's a tough loss. They, they you know, they, they lost 20 to 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think, I think more times than not, what I'm noticing in, in two weeks time with the Lions is that they, they're getting the ball to all their playmakers, except for the guy that really helped them last season in Sam Laporta. Mm-hmm. Like, Jameis Williams, I understand it. Now he's a starter. He's you're going to feed him the, the ball and everything. Amon Ra, you got to find a way to get him more involved. But your running backs are heavily involved, and that's fine. You got one of the best offensive lines, but you still make it really complex on defenses and start feeding Sam Laporta because that's going to open up everything else too. It did it did last season for Detroit, and it should this season if they get back on track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's key there too as well. Cause again, the tight ends will get you out of some of those tough uh, positions and where, you know, Goff's trying to throw it down the field gets yep. hit and, you know, you get and up with those interceptions like he had had uh, one more, uh, I guess you would say an upset or a big surprise for people that had people shell shocked, especially Dallas Cowboys <laughs> fans. How, who that, who them saints, who do that? Yeah. Beat them, something to beat them saints. How about that, man? That's the right. Saints destroy the, the, the Cowboys in, Jerry's house. That's it was right. glorious, Joe. I was loving it. Was. it. It was amazing to watch. And Derek yeah, Carr I'm, looking really good right now. So all you haters, I'm not out surprised. There. Not surprised at all. This is the Derek Carr that that I know fans were criticizing him heavily last year into mm-hmm. this year. But like, come on, like Derek Carr is a top ten. I'll say that until he's retired. 
but he's a top 10 quarterback. It's time to face it. This guy has done more with nothing. And then he comes to the Saints, just happens to have one of the worst play callers in NFL history coach him. And that's why that team struggled last year. Now they get Clint Kubiak in there, new offensive mind, kind of like a refreshing environment now. And Clint Kubiak is calling some really creative plays. I mean, he's got Taysom Hill in the backfield. He's got mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara out at wide receiver at times. I mean, he's starting to, starting mm-hmm. to confuse all these defenses. And he comes up with these very creative formations and plays. And it's really, really playing well into the Saints offense. So Derek Carr is executing at a super high level. He's he right now, after two weeks, the guy is one of the premier quarterbacks in the league right now. I understand it's only two weeks, but I, I tell you right now, if this doesn't show you anything, the fact that the Saints went into Dallas against a very good defense and they just whooped them. Like mm-hmm. we thought, we thought week one when they played the Panthers, they were like, oh, okay, it's the Panthers. They should have beat them up, you know. Mm-hmm. But now they win the, they went into Dallas and destroyed them. Mm-hmm. The Saints come marching in and then they march out of Dallas with a win. So good for the Saints. Yeah, absolutely, Joey. You know, it, it was crazy. And and it's really how do these teams respond after this? You know, what I mean, right. you're expected to go somewhere. Uh, you're expected to be uh, competitive. Um, this was like a playoff type of um, game, you mm-hmm. know, and you didn't show up. And a lot yeah. of people kind of brought it up to almost like uh, last year uh, when they played the Packers and mm-hmm. got smoked. Again, the yep. same kind of thing. Um, they need to really uh, check themselves here and get back to, on gear here because, like you said, they signed everybody to those big deals. And so now it's yeah. time to show up. And Mike right. McCarthy's still on the, that last year deal, I think. So, I mean, he's still not safe, though, out of everybody. So yeah. who knows? You Isn't have all those crazy? stars that you that you <laughs> say that you paid, and he's not safe. So no. um, one person that is trying to make the safe move, and we'll talk about it a little bit, Mm-hmm. is Canales in uh, the Carolina Panthers, but we'll get that in just a, yeah, a yeah. little bit here. Uh, one thing lastly, I want to touch, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. One thing I want to touch on, I want to touch on the Bengals and Chiefs. Sure. Because that was a very close game right down to mm-hmm. the wire. Bengals pretty much had the game. They did. Yeah. And it seemed like towards the end of the game, just much like a lot of them, that the, Ch- the Chiefs kind of get, I don't want to say bailed. I, I don't want to say that because the penalty on the field was legit. I'm not I'm not oh, debating yeah, yeah. I'm not debating the penalty but right. it just seemed like throughout that game that the Chiefs were being helped along the way to kind of keep them in within striking reach until it came t- down to it and you know the Bengals made critical mistakes at the very end getting a couple pass interference plays and it, it just just being just Mentally not being strong as a football player, just kind of like I know they're in the moment and they're and they're trying to make a play, but you got to be smart. You just can't run through a receiver. Uh, and, yep. and, it, and it's sad because that was a um, basically kind of like a Hail Mary play to get a first yeah. down. And mm-hmm. the dude, all just instead of running through the guy, run to the side of him and knock the ball away. Like th- yep. that would have been it. Then then it would have been game over. Like yep. Bengals would have won. So, but uh, that was very close game. And, and I love, I wanted to bring up something about the quarterbacks and like everybody, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow has been taking a lot of heat after week one and the offense for the Bengals. And he went 23 to 36, 258 yards and two touchdowns, no turnovers, had a pretty dar- darn good game. Patrick Mahomes, however, yep. had 18 of 25, still a good, good ratio there, but only threw for 151 yards, two touchdowns, yeah. but also turned the ball over two times, two interceptions. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my thing is like for the Chiefs going forward, Mahomes is not having a good year so far. Like he he right. hasn't had one of those breakout games where he's thrown for over 300 yards, four touchdowns, all that kind of stuff. We haven't seen that yet. And I don't I don't think it's the receivers. I think it's actually just Mahomes making these, you know, I don't want to say poor plays, but like maybe just not making the plays that he normally makes. So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how this team goes throughout the season. We got to definitely monitor the Chiefs because they haven't had any like, like clear cut wins, like just like no judgment, no question. <laughs> they just went in there and they whooped a the team. So far, they haven't been able to do that. 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely, Joe. It's been tougher, and uh, they've been luckily, you know, lucky to get some of these wins on some of them. Like you said, to where oh. that's why you know all over all over X it was happening. You know, people are you know tweeting right there or whatever. Yeah. What you call it, Xing, or is it now now that's X? You know, uh, <laughs> but people are all over, you know, out there and saying things. Oh, you know, they're in the here come the refs. They're in the pocket, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like you said, you can see some of it. I get it. I I understand yeah. that also that last play. You know was actual pass interference and people try and claim back that the the play before that like well the chiefs got penalized you know the play before that or so blah 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 too We're like yeah okay but wasn't that i want to guess but i think it was wasn't it like illegal hands to the face or something like that wasn't that when he mushed uh henderson yeah. in the face Trey or something henderson. like that? like yep. yeah because it's like well you're not that was blatant see that was blatant they can't yeah. come <laughs> miss on that one you have to throw them every <laughs> now and then but now they're just like all right guys we got to make sure they kind of get this one on this one. <laughs> Whatever the play is, we're throwing it. All right. Yep. No, yep. No, yep. No. yep. Exactly. Uh, but, um, but I don't know. It was a good game. And again, and, and it's tough to get a loss like that when you're there, you have them, you think you got them locked down. Mm -hmm. Mahomes mm -hmm. is playing down. You know what I mean? So this is when you want to get them because you, you come to think that they, they will eventually turn it around and start running. Yeah. They did it last year. Last year, they kind of seemed kind of off a little bit too for a little bit of the season and then turned yeah. it on. So, and, while, and, and real quick, while we're at it, like the Chiefs, they sustained a major injury now. Yes. Isaiah Pacheco, their starting running back, who everybody, all the fantasy owners are loving that dude, and rightfully yep. so. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to be shut down now. He's going to be he, he's going to short-term IR. He's going to miss – they're expecting, I mean, anywhere from like, because it's four weeks when you're on short-term IR, but they're saying six to eight weeks he'll be out. So mm -hmm. basically half a season. And they're call, they're bringing in warmer running back, Kareem, yeah. Hunt, the guy that's <laughs> been out there in, fan, in, in free agency. And I am as shocked that he never got a job yet, but mm -hmm. he's going back home, baby, back to KC. Yeah. And, yep. They finally and, welcome him home. Uh, how amazing is that for him? Like to kind of like make potentially end his career where he started it. You know what I mean? As a chief. So yep. uh, I I'm expecting him to have a, a, a small role because they still have Samaj P Ryan. Who's seen more as like the receiving threat of that team. And mm -hmm. then they got this young kid, you know, uh, Carson Steele. Yeah. Who, Steele. who I think is going to do great things for the chiefs. And I'm really curious to see, uh, how much of a boost that he might be able to give the Chiefs in the mm -hmm. run game? Yeah, they were definitely using him, him a lot in short yardage situations mm -hmm. and things like that. Hard they, runner, they yeah. like him too, so uh, that would be interesting to follow. Um, yeah. But like you said, Pacheco injured. There's a lot of injuries piling up here in this week too. Yeah. McCaffrey's still yeah. out. Russell Wilson's still out. Uh, and then also, let's talk about just Thursday night's game quick. Um, mm -hmm. seemed like Miami just had couldn't get anything done either. They tried to run the ball, couldn't get oh my running. God. They couldn't do anything right. You know, I mean, oh the Bills God. were just all over it. It looked messy. And then yeah. when uh Tua seemed like he, you know, again tried to put it all on his shoulders, had a first down, should have went down, and goes head first. And mm -hmm. there you go, suffers his third, I think, uh concussion, fourth, fourth concussion. It's his, it's his fourth concussion under a year. Under a year, yeah. So that in, instantly after people are questioning whether he should retire, things like that, his career and all this yeah. other stuff and things like that. So it's yeah. a big topic of debate. We're not going to get mm -hmm. too much into it, but no. um, the, the game, it seemed like the bills just had the game plan, right? Uh, the, 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 the dolphins couldn't figure anything out. And now you were out your quarterback and you got Skylar Thompson for the, you know, you know, until we two of can come back off. Oh, of oh, oh, hold on a second. Because they just signed Tyler Huntley off of the Ravens oh, that's practice right. squad. Yeah. So I'm telling you right now, that dude's got starting yeah. experience in Baltimore. He played well in Baltimore when he had those starts. And I, I honestly think that he could be a nice you just jump right team. in, huh? Yeah. Obviously, he's got to learn the playbook. He's got to, you know, he's got to start to get some kind of chemistry with the receivers and whatnot. And and here's the thing, too, is Miami Dolphins, even though they got Waddle and, and Tyreek, they're still waiting on Odell's return too. So when he gets healthy, it's going to make this team even more dangerous. And obviously he's got to remain healthy, but in order for that to happen, but I think that Tyler Huntley has a legit shot to be the starting quarterback for the Dolphins in the near future. And I think it won't even be close. 
Like, I think that dude will easily be able to come in and win that job. But wow. I, I have to say about Tua is he did see a neurologist, and it seems as if, like, he's okay. And the Dolphins are going to take a precautionary route and, and put him on short-term IR. So he will be out for the next four weeks. Mm-hmm. And he'll be back. Like, so that's the kind of the, the avenue that the Dolphins and Tua are taking, that he's going to have take some time off. And then when he comes back in five weeks, they're going to evaluate to see, you know, if he should start right away. Uh, so, what's your what's your opinion on people voicing the fact or the, the their opinion, uh, basically, on they think that, especially I'll bring up uh, Chris Canty, says that when this happens and these players keep playing, that maybe somebody else should step up higher or whatever and make the decision for them to retire. What do you think about that? With somebody coming up, like say the NFL and says, and just ending yeah. your career before you, uh, I mean, are you for that? Or do you think that's kind of, you know, who are you to, to, to tell this guy when to stop or something like that? That's Again, the, like, that's the job. Of the, yeah. That's the job of the neurologist. That's the whole reason why he went to get checked out. And if mm-hmm. the neurologist says he's going to be fine, that there isn't no, um, no extra damage, you know, after sustaining that another concussion and that he sees like he'll be fine, then that, then it comes down to the player and the organization's decision. Mm -hmm. So obviously he went and got checked out. Everything seems to be okay. And, and, and he seems to be normal, no extra damage or anything that, uh, any future kind of, uh, injury that could occur in his brain. Mm -hmm. And, so since the neurologist seems to say that it's okay and that he's good, they're going to take extra precaution. They're going to give him four weeks off and, and so he can rest and get ready and he'll be back in five weeks. So, or after the four week, you know, kind of vacation, if you want to call it that, um, they're going to bring him back in, probably have another meeting with him. How do you feel here? We're going to, we're going to have the team doctors and the neurologist look at you one more time before we put you out there. So. I think they're doing the right thing and being precautionary. Like it'd be one thing and it would be absolutely disgusting. I feel like if the dolphins just said, Oh, the neurologist said, it's okay. We got to we, we're going to put him in next week. Like that to mm-hmm. me would be, would be a little asinine. That to me would be really wrong to do. And, th- and that would show that you really don't care about the player, but I feel like they're taking the necessary steps and they're going to reevaluate after four weeks. And if everything is a go, Tua could be back this season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's why I think even the situation too. Um, leave it to the doctors, and then they can even tell them, say, "Hey, we've heard right. it before. Again, if you keep doing yeah. this, you are, you know, you might not walk away, or this and that, right. blah blah." And that's when some of these yep. uh, players have made that decision. I don't think it's anybody else's choice to make it for them. It's mm-hmm. got to be the player. Uh, but mm-hmm. again, with the knowledge from, you know, the, the neurologist or whatever, whoever mm-hmm. they're speaking to, even get a second yeah. opinion, whatever you want before you make that uh, decision, but make that decision yourself. Yeah. And, and, All right. And just, just to say real quick, the mm-hmm. whole point of that neurologist, cause the dolphins didn't want any backlash from this. They wanted him to go get checked out. He went and got checked out. Now the neurologist neurologist could have just simply said, no, I can't allow you to play anymore. If that yeah. happened, you would have saw a breaking story go across your screen when you're watching TV and, and it would have sent Tua retiring. Like that's what would have happened if the neurologist saw any kind of major danger or future uh, future issues for Tua. But apparently so far right now, all we're getting right now is that seems like he's just going to rest. It seems like he's going to be good to go five weeks from now. Yep. So we'll uh, revisit that in just a little bit, or we keep you guys posted as we learn more. All right. So Joe, um, this second week has been pretty crazy, but now we've got zero and two has. teams. That's right. Uh, so the, you know, the stat, it's something like ridiculous, like the chance of making the playoffs here after becoming zero and two is mm-hmm. very difficult, but yes, I think with the way some of these injuries had happened with some of these teams now, Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the teams that are still over to some of them, I think if they really play hard, which we've seen, uh, I think the, um, the, 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 the Bengals have been able to do this before been, I lose the first two games and make the playoffs still, um, yeah. 
what teams here out of the zero and two teams might have a shot here to still get back into the playoffs here. So we're going to start off with the NFC first. Uh, there's only a couple of teams that are 0-2 on, in, or on, in, in NFC. this uh, NFC. So that'll be gotcha. pretty quick, but they're pretty shitty teams. Well, no, two of them. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shots that's fired. Right. Oh, shots fired. That's right. All right, let's, let's look first here at the Carolina Panthers. There we go. But everybody knows this. I mean, we look at, we see the, uh, the guys wearing the paper bags here at the games and things like that, you yeah. know, their heads. Uh, right. can't get people to the stands. The team just looks in disarray. Um, and Bryce Young missing guys wide open and things like that too. The the, the mistakes, you know, all mm -hmm. around, just a terrible team right now. And then to be embarrassed back to back weeks. Now we're hearing that uh, Dave Canales is making the switch. He's pulling the plug. There he is. He's pulling out Bryce Young. And yeah, now, and it's, you know, it's not just him either. It's not mm -hmm. just Dave Canales. It's Dave. It's Dave Canales, the vice president, not the owner. The owner didn't say mm -hmm. anything about this, but sounds like the head coach, the vice president, the offensive coordinator. Um, they're all in unison and benching uh, Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. So for me, then, if it is, so then you think this is a save your job type of deal or a little bit of both and save your job. But also we're here to try and win some games. Uh, and we've also figured out that Bryce Young is not the guy, so that's why we're benching him and moving on right now and just try and win some games. Well, here's the thing. You got Everyone's got to remember, Dave Canales just recently got hired. This is his rookie year as a head coach. And yes. Bryce Young, did he draft him? No, he didn't draft Bryce Young. It's not his guy. Mm -hmm. it, it, he didn't pick him, so he really doesn't have any ties to Bryce Young. Yes, of course he wants to make it work because he's still young. It's only his second year. And would love for him to turn the corner and, and become the, the the starting future for this team. But reality is, his rookie year it was very bad, and and you could accredit that to the offensive line play was bad, or you know what I mean. But there were some there was a lot of moments where Bryce Young was had pressure. He would turn the ball over. He would fumble. He would make poor decisions. And now it's following him into this season with a new offense, with a new coordinator. You know what Dave Canales is calling the plays as well. So um, he's got some familiarity with, with uh, developing quarterbacks. Like you think of Baker Mayfield, who just got to Tampa last year. That's where Dave Canales came from. And he worked with Baker Mayfield. And look at Baker now. Like, like he's just killing it. So there's a lot of optimism in Carolina that Dave Canales could do the same for Bryce Young. So far, it isn't looking good at all. And it seems like Bryce or seems like Dave Canales and company mm -hmm. have all agreed that, like, mm -hmm. hey, listen, we've tried to work with this kid in the offseason. We went through the preseason games. We're into the season now. And I want to show that I'm a good coach. I want to show that we can win a few games. So, in order mm -hmm. to do that, I don't think Bryce Young is my guy in the future. Like, you know, and that's what yes. this decision basically says now, or it could be the other, the other side of the coin. It could be, we're going to sit Bryce Young because we want Bryce Young to learn from a guy who's been there, done that. And Andy Dalton, who was a starter at one point, who has the experience, we want him to learn from him on the sideline and watch how he plays, watch how he gets out of the huddle, watch how, mm -hmm. you know, do the little nuances of being a pro quarterback. He wasn't taught. He was just he just came in, was automatically deemed the starter, and let's go and thrown mm -hmm. to the fire. So maybe they're taking a, a different approach where they're gonna sit him and want him to learn a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe three weeks. And if Andy Dalton's still uh still screwing up and Andy Dalton's struggling, and then they might put Bryce Young back in and, and kind of like give him like a refresher. But um I think that this is something that it could be the right move but it also could backfire in by a landslide because it's it it's sending a message to Bryce Young it's sending a message to the team that we don't believe in Bryce Young and if that's the case you might have guys that have been supporting Bryce Young uh, since he got drafted and, and it might kind of ruffle some feathers maybe some team chemistry might not be there so I hope that this is the right decision for Carolina. I, I I don't think Andy Dalton is the answer either. I think 
that he might give them a little better. I'm not going to say he's going to be just outright so much better than Bryce Young, but with this team anyway, because the offensive line is lacking. I mean, the weapons, they haven't been as consistent either, but he will give them the experience. He will give them a guy who can make calls at the line of scrimmage, a guy that can, that can, you know, uh, identify the defense a lot easier. Maybe kind of, you know, yeah, figure, figure, yeah, figure it out before the play even snaps and he knows where to go with the ball. So those little nuances Andy Dalton can give them. I just don't know if this is the right decision. It might be a little too early. Like this is only week two and you're already pulling the cord on Bryce Young. So, yeah. And they're not really, they're not really ready offensively to kind of take, you know, score a bunch of points on teams. Anyway, they're still rebuilding. Right. Yeah. And Andy Dalton, that's what you got. You got the experience, you know, the things that, you know, reading defense, stuff like that. Every now and then, you know, Andy Dalton, he's going to give you that lame duck uh, mm -hmm. interception or something like that then too, that he's uh, famous for, but <coughs> he, he, that's what you're doing. You're putting in, get some, somebody that, that has the experience he's in there. Yep. And like you said, here, watch this guy, see what he does and, and, and this and that, see how he conducts things. Um, oh. and, and then here you go. Here's, here's a, you know, a, a, a surface tablet too. You know, you watch along with them and things like that. See what you see, um, right. what we're looking at. And I think the receivers, when you talk about people maybe losing, you know, the rest of the team or some, or some people um, that might have been Bryce Young's, uh, you know, you know, uh, room or, you know, rooting for him. I, I think one thing here, you want to show some of these guys, though, too, after being so bad and losing badly last year. And right now you're 32, like ranked 32nd in a lot of different items here. A win, a lot of categories. Is, yeah. A win is very nice, and that can help with a lot of different things. So if these guys feel good and they can pull out a win, um, that does things for you know Leggett here, their new wide receiver here, that shows something for them. Mm -hmm. Like here, yo, we're dedicated to winning. We want to do something to get something here. And I think you know, again, the weapons aren't crazy, but they're enough to get something done. That I think if Andy Dalton's in here. I think he can definitely do a lot more than what's been done there so far. So I think it's a step yeah, towards I, the positive route here. And, you know, like you said, not their guy. They'll look for their guy soon. Yeah. The, the only issue that I see is that you don't really have a clear cut number one on this team. Like you don't yeah. have any no, I hear you. go to guy that's going to be a yeah. big playmaker for you. Adam Thielen, he used to be great. Like he used to be amazing in the NFL. He's lost a step. You know, Jonathan Mingo has never I know I understand it's yeah. only been a year, but Jonathan Mingo mm -hmm. hasn't developed enough to do anything. Deontay Johnson is a really good slot receiver. However, from from time to time he drops the ball. So I mean and, and honestly, they did a lot in the offseason with this offensive line to improve the protection. And that's been abysmal. Like, sometimes when you go and add a free agent or pay big money to get someone to go there to, to, to upgrade your team, sometimes that little band aid. It just doesn't work. Offense guard, who was just, oh, there's also effects, you know, Bryce Young and, and how well he plays is that O-line was supposed to look good. So expected to be rebuilding. So they have a new head coach, a team that's not ready to compete just yet. I know they're trying, but it's going to be a couple more seasons later. Yep. 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 So again, I don't really see them making the play playoffs anytime soon this year. So we're just going to no. move on now to uh, no. the next team who is 0-2 no. in the Giants. And that is and in the uh, league, and that's the New York Giants right there. Um, Giants, again, again, they checked, they really shouldn't be 0-2 um, because in this game, they had scored multiple touchdowns. Their defense held the Washington Commanders in the red zone multiple times all like, until the, the last final possession you know where you know they 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 held them and then gave up you know the last game uh winning field goal uh but they were holding it you know they were holding the line and if the giants had a healthy kicker and Graham Gano did not pull his hamstring early in that game 
they're ahead already because they're not going for two every single time yeah. or going for it on fourth time down when you're in, you know, you know, on the opposite side of the 50. And that's what they did. You know, they didn't punt very often. Once they tried to their punt with, uh, you know, their punter here to try to kick a field goal with them. Um, yeah. get, what, a Gillian um, did not do very well. Uh, so they had to go to that whole two point conversion, uh, thing. You, and it sucks because they were doing well. Uh, they were getting the ball to Mal Malik neighbors was having a day. Um, I thought Singletary was still running very well too, as well. So I thought overall they were doing well, giving up a lot of yards on defense, but still again, bend, but don't break at the, uh, the red zone. Uh, but just not enough. If you can't, you know, can't complete those, yeah. uh, two point, point conversions. <laughs> You mean to tell me that they didn't pull off like the Houston Texans from last season where they just had like, I forgot who it was at the time, but he was like a defensive player and he, and mm -hmm. he came in and he kicked an extra point. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, like you mean to tell me that the Giants didn't have tryouts for like nobody, kicking right? like as emergency kicker. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. sometimes, cause sometimes you, this happens, right? Like everybody carries only one kicker and if by chance your kicker gets injured, now it's like, oh crap, do we bring another kicker in and cut someone else off the roster? Do do we try to find someone that can kick that's already on the team? So like this is kind of one of those rare situations that the Giants obviously they their punter couldn't kick it. You know, he didn't do well, like you said. So uh they were they were at a you know a hard place here. And it, it sucks because it definitely ruined the decision making in the game for them they it's almost like they just their hands were tied like they're like hey we don't have anybody that can kick field goals so we're just gonna have to go for it mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i mean it, it's tough it was tough to watch because again it was nice to yeah. see the fact that they were able to get into the end zone so there was a lot of positives um daniel mm -hmm. jones running very well too on top of it so they're going the right direction now mm -hmm. if you if you look at the uh you know their their chance to possibly make the playoffs we know it's slim to none it's most likely they're not but one thing i will say again is the way this nfc has been playing each other or even playing this year mm -hmm. um and even with some of the injuries right now it's up and down so especially that nfc east we talked about talked about this in the our preview this division, I think, this year is going to be closer than it has been in a while. Mm -hmm. So, again, yeah. I think if you, all you got to do is try and win that division, you know, but, again, if some of the other divisions are, we... are tighter, um, <laughs> then maybe you have a chance to sneak in. I, are you know, we I'm going back? The Giants right. can make the playoffs, but I don't know. Again, it looks pretty all grim right. for me right now. Are we going back to the uh, – what? How long? it wasn't that long ago when this division was like – all four teams almost made it. I think three out of the four made the playoffs because yeah. the NFC was so weak and that that, that division was stronger. I and, think it was and, the last uh, time Daniel Jones was good, which was a couple years ago, like two, three <laughs> years ago. Yes, and everybody made a push. Yeah. The Eagles were good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was pretty funny. So maybe it could occur again. Like, But that's the thing, though, is as good as – as tight as this division is, as tight as the NFC is, that just across the board – when you look at that whole conference, a lot of those divisions are going to be tight. So that yeah. just means like it's going to get real interesting down the stretch at the end of the season, because it's going to come to like, whether you win or lose that last week, it's going to probably dictate a lot of teams making or not making the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. So again, for me, it's, it's, it's a nay, but you know, I, I don't, you know, put yeah. it out of the realm just because the way that conference is. No, I'm, I mean, yeah, the way we're playing right now. It's it's a no for me. I, I think that they're again. I kind of go back and forth with Daniel Jones. Like sometimes he plays well, and you're like, okay, he he shows promise. You know, keep giving him chances. Mm -hmm. And then there's and then there's a lot of times where it's like he continues to make the same mistakes. And you, as a fan, it's got to drive you absolutely yeah. berserk because yeah. it's like, dude. You did this last year, and you did yeah. this the year before. It's like, when are you going to learn from your past mistakes? And it seems like he's just not getting it. So, unfortunately, I feel like Daniel Jones's time with the Giants is coming to an end. I think the Giants have to find themselves either someone, either two ways. 
Like they might have to bring in a veteran next year to at least have an insurance policy and then mm -hmm. go draft a quarterback. And then let's see who can, who wins the job. Uh, or they just might go straight to the draft and not even bother with signing a veteran and uh, just kind of like try to bring the guy along slowly as much as they can. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 So here we go. Finally to the, uh, the last team in the NFC that is Owen two. Uh, and that is, the Los Angeles Rams. How about the Rams? 0-2 now, Joe. What um, is happening? What I know. And <laughs> why receivers out there now? Who's their wide receivers? Oh. Because you oh. lose uh, Puka Daku in the first game yep. and now in the second yep. game, Cooper yep. Cup. You know, so yep. who's who's in and Atwell? I don't know. Last game too. He, he had a drop that was terrible. Uh yeah. who's gonna be the, the receiver? Who's gonna be the guy on this one? You know, for first gonna have two. They're going to have two. So a lot of people, if you like Rams fans know him very well, Demarcus Johnson or Demarcus Robinson, mm -hmm. Demarcus Robinson. He was a, he was, he had amazing chemistry with Stafford last year. Like towards the end of the season, man, he was coming on strong. He was getting the ball a lot uh, and was making a lot of big plays. And this year, I, I feel like Demarcus Robinson, Stafford's going to go to him a lot. He's got, it's basically going to be his go-to. And then second behind him, is new new uh, free agent signee Tyler Johnson, who comes over from Tampa Bay, another kind of younger, um, good size wide receiver, kind of tall, uh, and a guy that really didn't wasn't given a shot in Tampa Bay, and now he's going to definitely get a shot with the Rams right now. All right, yeah, and um, but it, it was tough too because this is one of those teams that was expected to make the playoffs you know mm -hmm. you know at least I mean, in our eyes too yeah um, absolutely you know because yep. you know yep. look the way they, they play their their defense is looking pretty good even too you know um, except for this week <laughs> except for this week that's right and uh and they were, we know the the field too long. That, yeah yeah you know the stat that the fact that you know here oh until it's tougher to make the playoffs here but mm -hmm. with the way this division is or this conference rather yeah um it's 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 a, a tight race so i don't i'm not out of the realm of seeing them bounce back and get back in this thing mm -hmm. and we've seen matthew stafford mm -hmm. before when the chips are down and some of these guys are out he like you said he will find that next guy it's the next guy up and hey you you're getting the ball now right. you know what i mean right. make it happen <laughs> and sean McVay and his offense he's gonna dial something up here to get things going uh for these guys so um this division, if the if the 49ers lose to another team that you know is pretty good and they can't get things going either as well, yeah. uh, again, it's it's anybody's ball game in this one, you mm -hmm. know. Because if you look at right. it down the board right now, yeah. strength wise in that division, mm -hmm. the Cardinals look like kind of like a a dark horse team, right? Like how offensively they're coming out at people, uh, yep. the way the the 49ers have kind of been slow, the Rams. Mm -hmm slower you know it was a back and forth game last or week before last against the the uh the lions and then yeah. seattle even slow starts the first two games and especially this past one uh in foxborough against the uh the patriots and then eventually pulling out the victory so right again as long as they can stay with it get some victories here within division yeah. um and like we said we expected them to be a playoff team i would not mm -hmm. be surprised if these guys go in zero and two and are making the playoffs yeah, I, and I think that, the, you know, it's not like Cooper Cup and Puka are both done for the year. Right. Like, you're only done for four to four to six weeks. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just kind of trying to estimate, like, between both injuries. Like, you know what I right. mean? So uh, they're coming back. Like, yeah. and once they not come the back, the it's good. The offense will get back on track. And they still don't have Tyler Higby yet. Like Tyler Higby has been injured and hasn't been able to be in the lineup either. So once he does, it's going to open up the, the 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 offense more. And then Cooper Cup comes back, Puka Nakua comes back, and now we're one big happy family in LA and we're starting to rack up points once again. So I I, I know that uh, one of their, their big time offensive linemen, Steve Avila, he got injured too. He's going to miss some time. So obviously they're going to wait, wait for his return, but Defensively, they're still good despite the score with the Cardinals. It's just that they're on the field so much, they got so tired, and they couldn't really do much at the end. Um, but I have no concerns right now. I have no concerns with the Rams. I think they'll get back on track uh, as they start to get healthier. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's the NFC. Let's move on to the AFC side, which they have a good handful. A yeah, good handful. And be- <laughs> yeah. Before we before we get to the AFC, real quick, just want to say everybody, thanks for tuning in. We, we really appreciate you guys, uh, the Blitz Nations. We like to call you guys. Uh, you can find this podcast and many more like it. Head over to grumblingsmedia.com. Anywhere, anything from sports, entertainment to political, head over there. Give it a sh- give it a check it all out. Uh, also, do us a huge favor. Head over to YouTube for us, please. It definitely helps our channel. It definitely helps us grow. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to comment down below. We are live. We react to all questions. We react to any opinions that you might have or anything you want to talk about. We'll 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 drop everything and talk about it right now. We'll do it. I there dare you go. guys. <laughs> That's right. And instead of the logo uh, this week, I have put that QR code right there in the corner. So I made it pretty easy for everybody. I mean, there you go. Just scan the code and it'll take you to grumblingsmedia.com, which can link you to everything. All the shows. Yeah. All the channels, everything. So there and you it go. It doesn't stop and there. The you can no. also take us on the go with you if you'd like. You know, take us to the gym, to your workplace. If you're just doing gardening out back in the yard, like anything, uh, anywhere you get your podcasts, make sure you hit us up. All right. So AFC um, at the bottom of the barrel. Here we go. We've got the Denver Broncos <laughs> at the bottom <laughs> of the barrel. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I take my shots yeah. when I can, Joe, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they got a problem. Leave a comment. Uh, but so, yeah, here you go. The Broncos, the Broncos. looking very good. Um, what's Sean Payton got to say now? You know what I'm saying? It's like hey. you know, he talks so much trash about Nathan Hack and oh. Daniel Hackett. <laughs> All I know is Sean Payton seems to think that he fooled everybody in the draft to get Bo Nix. And that that Bo Nix was going to carry him over the top to the promised land into the playoffs this year, but um, there's this thing called mistakes, where sometimes and I gotta say, like I'm going to be honest, like Bo Nix has surprised me so far in week two. Like he did show some highlight plays. He he's done a pretty decent job as a rookie coming in. So kudos to him, but he's not he's not developed yet especially at the NFL level. So like, even though he, sh- he has some nice plays, there's some nice highlight plays, good plays that he makes, but then there's also some mistakes that he's made, especially in week two. And um, it's showing, right? Like this is something that he he's not Superman. Like Sean Payton thought he was. Yeah. He might be a good talent, talented player, but he's still not a finished product. So they're going through their bumps and bruises right now. Hopefully he gets better as the season progresses. Uh, and, but you're right, Jim, like Sean Payton talked a big game this off season, talked a big game after leading into the regular season, said, everybody's going to sleep on us and it's okay. We're going to prove everybody wrong. Well, Sean, you're owing two right now. Now I know, I know you don't hit the panic button after two weeks, but things aren't looking good. So let's wait and see how the Broncos go moving forward. But honestly, as much as some people before the season started were stating, oh, watch out for the Broncos. They could push for this division. You guys were smoking something really good. <laughs> so uh, Denver Broncos, I, I, I don't, again, they're another team that they're, they have some players that they still need to find to add to this roster to, to get them to that level. And right now they just don't have it. You got also got to think too, of a lot of the players leaving Denver, like defensively, offensively, there's been guys that have, that have, have left. And it's like, they really didn't replace them with that much better talent, almost like lateral moves or even below average. So the Denver Broncos got a little bit of ways to go. And and this year is not going to be the year. I don't see Denver making the playoffs. Yeah. I think defensively they've been doing pretty good for what it is. Um, right. And they don't yeah. have any real weapons again. You got Cortland Sutton and Marvin Mims. Mims. And like, okay. And then you're pretty much it. And if you look at their depth chart, there's like nobody after that. Um, they have to get guys off the practice squad or is, something. So is, um, um, I got to look it up, but is Tim Patrick sure. still on this team? Uh, no. He's not. Nope, they got Josh Reynolds. They grabbed Josh Reynolds from the 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 uh, Josh Reynolds Lions. But, okay, yep. but no Tim Patrick. He's not there anymore. No, no, no. 
Um, so again, they got uh two rookies, right. two rookies. Uh, I wonder they ended up he... on from the seventh round and Troy Franklin in the fourth round. Yeah. But that's the thing. You're starting out gotcha, uh, gotcha. with a rookie gotcha. quarterback. Yeah, because because um, he was a good player. You got no real, huh? What's that? No, I said yeah, yeah. I just said I agreed with you. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You're starting with a rookie quarterback again. Not or you know, like I said, weapons are okay, but not spectacular here. But. You're going to go through the growing pains. Again, you threw right in the fire. Like I wouldn't have, again, I mean, this is a, your opportunity where you're just kind of like Zach Wilson, somebody, throw him out there. You know what he is already, whatever, at least, or maybe see if he can play a little better to find, you know, uh, either one, a starting job somewhere else, or just you're a good backup. You know, he's got been, been in the, the, you know, in that driver's seat before. And then Bo right. Nix sit behind with Sean Payton, not exactly like, hey, you know, listen to Zach Wilson. He's going to teach you a whole lot. Sit with Sean Payton, go through the games, watch the film, you know, this mm -hmm. and this, and then bring him into it. Patrick Mahomes right. wasn't Patrick Mahomes until he got thrown in, you know, after sitting a year. Who knows what he right. would have done that first year? He might have done okay. But you don't know right. when you're just thrown right in the fire. And, you you know, and yeah. even Mahomes even had more weapons when he was able to jump in. So this is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. He's kind of already starting in the back seat already, and he's got to try and move forward. And, and it's always tough, you know. The, despite me not yeah. liking, you know, him at all or whatever, just the, I'm just saying that's a good way to look at it. You know what I mean? You know why yeah. he's got the turnovers yep. and things like that. So he's going to learn hopefully right. here for them soon. But again, Broncos, uh, we didn't think they're going to be very good, and here they are. You know, so I don't think they have a chance to make the playoffs at all. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I I, th I think it's right. you know it's one of those things where like it's another team that's still building that team back up, uh, and yeah. they're just they're it is what it is. Like we yeah. see this all the time. Like we we kind of already understood the Broncos and thought that they weren't going to make a playoff push, but a lot of people like to be very optimistic. We'll say, yeah. And they like to be that one guy that got it right. You know what I mean? You know, like, hey, I said this, you know, especially uh, <laughs> Colin Coward like to jump on top of that. I think he might have been a Bo Nix guy. Uh, he's quiet right now. <laughs> oh, he could have All been. Right, next, yeah. yeah. yeah next, next yeah. Uh, we've got the Tennessee Titans here. The Titans again. Uh, that was a close game this past week here. They were in it kind of again, but you're still seeing the mistakes that uh, really – really get you frustrated with Will Levis, you know what I mean? Because you see the good things, mm -hmm. and then you see the, the – the, with the good, you got the bad. And, yeah. again, yeah. what are you doing, buddy? You're, like, literally laying on the ground on your belly just about, and you're throwing underhand toss back. What's that going to do for you? That is not saving a play anywhere, you know what I mean? And the right. fact that you got, you know, told not to do that after last week, you do it again this week. And let me tell you, he got laid into. Yeah, for sure. And not not just got laid into, but uh, Bill Bill Callahan, new head coach of the Titans, he and offensive coordinator, um, he not only laid into Will Levis, but also was so frustrated at the press conference after the game that he would he basically called him dumb. Yeah, he was just like, I mean, he lost. Like he just lost it at the press conference. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's almost like he's like, ah, I give up with this guy. I need someone else. It's yeah. almost like he pulled a Sean Payton. He's like, I want him cut next week, you know. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, I, I think it's just kind of like overreaction after the game for the coaching staff for Will Levis. Like, obviously, yes, he 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 made a couple of really really bad mistakes that you should never do as a quarterback. Uh, and but I think it's like. It's sadly, it's one of these growing pains that Will Levis has this season that he needs to wake up, like point blank. Like it's all on him. Like those kind of bonehead decisions, like he's got to learn from that. And and going forward, he cannot afford to make another mistake like that again. Just can't. Like mm -hmm. stop trying to be Superman. You're not. You you got guys around you to help you. If you get sacked, that's part of the game. 
just come back and, and if there is the next play or we punt. It's that simple. We don't turn the ball over. Stop doing it. So uh, Levis has to learn, and I'm sure that the coaching staff is going to get back into this week and and really focus for him especially. Like, listen, we don't want any unnecessary turnovers from now on from you. Like, mm-hmm. you do it again, then you're, you're going to put us in a tough spot. Like, I don't know if they'll get to the point of benching Will Levis, but it's it's close. Like, it's it's kind of one of those things where you don't want to bench him. You want to keep developing him because he's still young. He, he really didn't even have a full rookie season. So yeah. it, this basically is part thing. of his rookie year. So it, there's a lot of growing pains. So I don't think I, – I think they're going to continue to work with him. I don't think that's, a, that's even an issue. But the frustration is there for sure. And this team, honestly, on paper is too good. Uh, to to not put up a a better fight and keep making those mistakes. Yeah, I mean, again, and and you look at it, you could see like the potential there. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. thing with this team, and that's why when we were even looking at the division and trying to uh, pick, you know, our winners and things like that, yeah. we we're like, oh, sadly enough, yeah. I think these guys are just at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, gonna chuck it up at, at you know at the, at the last year, but right now. Uh, Houston's right on top two and oh, and the all the other teams are owing two. So, yep. who knows going to come out of this whole thing here? Um, you know, with, <laughs> with the Colts and all these guys, where we thought it was going to be a tough division, there's going to be tight. Uh, maybe a couple of these teams bounce back, but right now we're going to talk about a few of them here being all yeah. oh, and two at the same time. So, uh, if they do the- have a chance to get back in it, you know, they better make mm-hmm. sure that you know they keep it close, uh, you know, with, with the Titans here. Yeah, and for the Titans, one last thing is like a lot of th- a lot of games. So the first two weeks of the NFL, a lot of these like close games or like they've all been decided by turnovers. They all have been. And, yeah, and that's something that you got you have to limit that. I know it happens, but you have to limit it. You can't allow it to to to, to ruin your game plan. You can't allow it to, to to take over the game. And that's what I I feel like in the first couple of weeks of this season so far. A lot of these close games are determined by who turned over the ball more. You know what I mean? So Titans did that this week with the Jets. You know, they they could have – the Titans could have surprised people maybe and, and beat the Jets. But those turnovers were critical. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Absolutely. And turnovers, that is the key. You will lose the turnover battle. Most likely you do lose the game. All right, so Titans uh, for me, it's a yeah. no again. Uh, I don't think they do it, but I honestly, I, I can't say no right now mm-hmm. because of the way that division is. Yeah, uh, yeah. no one. It seems like Houston definitely wants the division crown. They're gonna probably yes. like, just be handed it. At least that's the way it looks right now. But yeah. I gotta say, like that for all those other teams to be on two, it's like they didn't start the season yet. So. Yeah. I think the Titans are still in it. I, I'm going to say they do have a shot. <laughs> All right. There you go. Nice. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars here in that same division. We're talking about being one of the yeah. 0 2 teams. <laughs> uh, a team I thought would bounce back this year. And, you know, again, defensively, I think they look pretty good, but uh, the offense just not good. Even the fact that they're, they're bad is uh, Trevor Lawrence comes out and just said, hey, we suck. And so you're, you're, you know, it's, I think it's messed up. Wow. Because again, it's one thing to be honest, like, why sometimes, would you say that? but do, but you're the, the, the quarterback, you're, you're, the, you're leader, the leader and you're like, you're just like, yeah. Hey guys, by the way, we just suck. It's like, no, you know, you're supposed to like take, you know, responsibility. You're supposed to like, yeah, we've had some bad plays and this and this, blah, blah, but we're working hard. We'll be back. You know, the positivity right now, yeah. he is so beat down now that he's just, there's no positivity. And that's no. a, a a really bad thing for a team right now, sitting at zero and yeah. two, Joe. Uh, right. Where a team again, Doug Peterson, he made it to the playoffs one year, but they haven't got back there since. So who knows what what can happen with this team? And if you know yeah. this, uh, this is the attitude that some of these guys have. Yeah. Are we going to see a, a change up here? I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> like here's the thing: and before we even got to the regular season, that was my concern is Trevor Lawrence is his play because there's been a numerous amount of times last season where they should have won the game and he made a turnover or Mm -hmm. he he fumbled the football because he wasn't, wasn't aware of the pressure coming to it. So a lot of time, I'm not, I'm not just blaming Trevor Lawrence. Let's get that straight. But the, 
it starts with him. And if he continues to miss wide receivers that are open, continues to make bad decisions and turn the ball over, it really puts a damper on your defense. Like now your defense is try, has to try to bail you out again and bail you out again. And before you know it, just like a lot of these other teams that struggle on offense, their defense is on the field way too many times and way too long. They get tired. So they're going to give up points. Like they just can't keep it up uh, for that long. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it, it's one of those frustrating things, especially for Jaguar fans, that they're just like, we know that we're a good team. We're just not playing like it. And, and Trevor Lawrence, you know, he has to snap out of it. He has to he has to be better. He has to be a better quarterback, not turn the ball over and, and, and just take what's given to you. Make the right throw, because we've seen him airmail it a lot of times. It's just like, what is he doing? Like it almost yeah. looks like he's it, it almost looks like he's throwing the ball away, but we all know he's not. So, uh, yeah, it, it starts with him on offense. He's got to correct those issues. He's got to get better in order for this team to have any shot to get back into this race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but right now, uh, they don't look very good. Um, so, with this division, like you said, oh. it is tight right now, zero and two. But you know, not to, I think yeah. it's highly unlikely. Yeah, one other thing I'll mention too sure. is Travis Travis at the end's gotta take care of the ball too. Yeah, he can't, he can't fumble big. the ball. Like that's yeah. always been his it's always been a negative of his, even in college when he was playing. Yeah, dynamic runner, dynamic player, but from time to time he just drops a football. So that's gotta be corrected as well. We we talk about turnovers and and, and that really does, you know. It, it, it ruins the momentum that your team might have. It ruins the fact that you, you might be winning and now you're losing. So it's such a critical stat that you cannot give up uh, for the Jaguars. Even though it's kind of like a three-way tie for a one, two, I, yeah. I just don't have confidence in the Jags making the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, too, at this point, again, you know, like I said, that, that whole thing too, with his demeanor about it all, I'm like, I don't know, you know, that's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like you said, Etienne, at the end, you know, a lot of people, I, you know, wanted to try and grab him maybe for fantasy and things like that. He's and, good. Uh, the turnovers are, 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 are a struggle here for you. Um, all right. Next up, we've got the, um, let's go to, uh, I guess I could sell. I can't for some reason the uh, the Colts logo isn't bouncing popping up. I'll try and get it up, but let's talk to the Colts. Don't know why it is, but there you go. Maybe they don't They're want to show their face. and non-existent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and that's what's funny is too, because week one again, it looks like you know they came out with some spadaz, you know, and it looked yeah. like they're gonna you know do something here. Yeah. Uh, and then this week it was totally different. You know, like to get the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde teams that we saw that, you know, between week one and week two. Yeah. And unfortunately for the the Colts defense, they're going to be without DeForest Buckner for for some time. Uh, The key cog for the, the, their defensive line. So Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a loss there. Um, You know, we, we talked about in week one, how we wanted to see more uh, from, from Anthony Richardson. We wanted to see him being able to pass the ball more and more effectively, uh, didn't show up in week two. Uh, so he's doing okay, but he, again, he needs to do more as a quarterback to really kind of help this offense take off. Jonathan Taylor can't do everything. You can't hand the ball off to him 75 times every game and expect you to get anything because that's what teams are doing right now. Teams are playing, when they play the Colts, they are trying to shut down Jonathan Taylor and force Richardson, because he's still young at quarterback, they're trying to force him to make the plays. And mm-hmm. so far, it hasn't worked out. We'll see if things change in week three. Maybe they cha- maybe they have a different game plan for week three. Uh, but they're a team that I th- I'm not going to say – I, I do believe that this team could turn it around and maybe potentially get a wild card spot. I don't think it's going to be a clear cut, clear cut playoff seed, but mm-hmm. I think that they're a team to watch, uh, especially if they get better uh, as, as we go through the season. I think they're a team to watch that they maybe might be able to crawl their way into a wild card game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because also too, Joe. I mean, when you look at it, you got to also look at the team they played. And we kind mm-hmm. of looked at this game as when we were going doing our picks. We're like, well, mm-hmm. Malik Willis, he hasn't really yes. shown much, 
right? Yes. So we're like, I don't know, but we just don't know. You just so we're just gonna, yeah. So we were gonna like, all right, well, we're gonna go with the Colts on this one though right. too. But yeah. you forget Packers defense is really good. Yes, and uh, again, um, you know, the Packers and their their team, they really got it all together here when game planning and things like that. They said, All right, you know, we don't have you know Jordan Love, but you know what, we'll just try and kill you with the running attack. You know what I mean? What the hell we were the Colts thinking? <laughs> what the hell were the Colts thinking? Honestly, like yes. Malik Willis is the starter. He just got there a week ago. What do you yeah. think the Packers are going to do? Run yeah. the ball. So yeah. why did why wasn't the game plan to be like, all right, we're going to shut down Josh Jacobs like in mm-hmm. week one, and we're going to make Malik Willis beat us, whether it be with his legs or his arm. We're going to, if he beats us, we deserve the loss. But at least that way we know we took care of business. But they just didn't do that. They allowed Josh Jacobs to run all over them. And they had no answer defensively to stop anything that they were doing. So mm-hmm. amazingly, Malik Willis comes in after being there a week. And, and we, we alluded to this last week when we were talking about the game, how the game plan is going to be this simple. They're going to run the freaking football and – try to run the ball down their throats. And then Malik Willis, whenever they have to throw, it's going to be short, high percentage throws. That's exactly the game plan. We called yep. it. And, yes. and, and the Colts, I don't know how the Colts didn't see that. They're making, making yes, a game plan exactly. to stop it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here you, here you are. And you're right. Green Bay's defense is legit. It's one of the better defenses in the league. And it's no joke. So we knew that that part of their team was going to be rock solid. But for mm-hmm. the Colts to not be able to do anything, they couldn't score, they couldn't play defense, and here they are sitting with another L. Yeah, yeah, well, giving up was I think it was like 151 yards or so for J- yeah. Josh Jacobs here. I mean, yeah. that's that's crazy. You can't do that. And again, uh, you know, Richardson with the three picks, you know, turnovers, yeah. like you said, is very right. bad. Uh, right. for your team on top of it yep. um all right so the, here we go we got two more here we're gonna look at then we'll get right to our picks and these two again um kind of a surprising pick at least for for this one right here and it is the baltimore ravens and just like that a tight game with kansas city and then yep. a tight game with the the raiders and you lose that one too you're sitting at oh and two and people mm-hmm. and, and and the fans you talk about fans oh. <laughs> yeah, you said it earlier, you know, they're like freaking out right now. Like, yeah. how is this happening right now? Oh, you know, yeah. not only Raiders yeah. fans like, hey, we just won, but then, then also the Ravens fans like, what? <laughs> What's going on? You know what I mean? We're yeah. a playoff contender. We're a Super Bowl yeah. contender. This was our they year. Yep. And uh, here they are at 0-2. Um, but again, a very good team, you know, around the board. Um, mm-hmm. Likely has been really stepping up for this team, making some big plays at the tight end position. Um, oh, yeah. But we talked about Lamar Jackson again, and his numbers are, are pretty good. I mean, if you look at you get sixty three percent, you know, uh, around there, uh, you know, completion percentage, you know, two hundred plus yards. Uh, but when it comes down to it, it, you know, you're missing the 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 bread and butter. It's not there. You know what I mean? And uh, mm-hmm. he's with the first game running around, making a lot of plays with his legs. Uh, but when it came down to it to win the game, couldn't get the job done. And in this game, no. again, the defense stuffed them, knew how to play them. And um, now they are 0 and 2. So it's going to be a tough road ahead for them. But, uh, you know, they are uh, one of the best teams in, in the AFC. So they're going to make a push here. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing is like this team is built to win now. We all know that. We all expected the Ravens to be a, a playoff caliber team and, and a team that might be able to push for the Super Bowl. But after two weeks and after, I mean, you can say like, oh, the percentage that Lamar Jackson throws is over 60 percent. And this that thing. Yeah, that's all. That's a cool number. But the only the only category that matters is wins. So he's 21 to 34 this past week, 247 yards, a touchdown. And he did, he did throw an interception. Mm -hmm. So um, my, my, my thing with Lamar too. And and I watched, I watched most of this game. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched most of it. And what I was able to catch and what I saw is Lamar Jackson yet again, did the same thing as he did in week one. He struggled to throw the ball to his guys that were open. And he, he just, he just can't. I don't know what it is. It's like sometimes he makes amazing throws. Like 
He'll throw to Zay Flowers streaking down the sideline, 60 yard, 58 yards down the field, and just mm-hmm. drop it into his hands in mid stride. And, and, and he makes a, a nice throw there. But then most of the time, he's air mailing passes. He's not being able to hit his open receiver. So, like, did as a quarterback, did he regress? Like, he's just not consistent enough as a quarterback. That's really what it is. He makes some plays that are that are nice, and then there's other throws that you're. It, it makes you scratch your head. Like, he made that he made that same throw two games ago. What 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 changed? So it's like he's the consistency of Lamar Jackson's passing is what's killing the Ravens' offense. It, it it stops drives. It, it, it they went three and out. The, I mean, the Raiders' defense is a is a really good defense, but they went three and out, especially in the second half, a lot of times where they just couldn't sustain drives, and much of it was because Lamar wasn't executing. He was very inconsistent with his throws. So, with that being said, Lamar Jackson is struggling mightily as a quarterback so far after two weeks of football and this doesn't look good Uh, they need to figure something out like we i mentioned earlier in the show real quick briefly i said i'm not seeing enough mark andrews being involved that Mm -hmm. dude you need to feed him the ball because that's what helps lamar jackson get in rhythm it helps him build confidence throughout the game the like isaiah likely is nice don't get me wrong keep him involved but you gotta get mark andrews the ball more often because that's what's going to help you open up you not you don't just have one really good tight end. You have two really good tight ends. So you could really mess up defenses that way. So that's what I think is missing from their offense. I feel like they still need to to get back to that. Like they when Mark Andrews before his injury, he was feeding him the ball kind of routinely, and it helped open up the rest of the offense and make plays easier for Lamar, Lamar to do. So that I think that's the thing that's missing for their offense. But until that gets figure it out. I, I feel like they're going to continue to struggle. The defense though, the Ravens defense is really good. Like I, what mm-hmm. I watched when I was watching that Raiders game is they're really good. Like they're, they're another really good squad. And I think that as soon yeah. as the Ravens do figure out that offense, they're going to be right back into the swing of things. So I think this is a, a Ravens team that don't hit the panic button. They'll figure it out and uh, they'll, they'll be back in the playoff hunt soon. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at their schedule, too, it'll get a little bit better for them. Um, and then also, uh, like you said, right now it looks like they're kind of playing down a little bit, too. We've seen the the, the Chiefs are playing down a little bit. Ravens kind of seen there, too, like on the defensive side even, too, um, where, where players where you think, like, oh, man, he normally makes that play, and he's just not a little bit right now. Uh, they're 32nd against the pass right now in yards uh, given up. And that's some mm-hmm. some of the things I'm kind of like talking about. It's not like they're giving up yeah. major plays, stuff like that, and things like that. Yeah. You know, and a lot of scoring. It's just you know, little just if offish. And like you said, hopefully as the season gets going through, they'll just turn it up some more. And for me, again, get Derrick Henry going. Let this guy be the workhorse if you got a man. You know, just get him rolling. I would like to see that with this team. And yeah, then that'll take absolutely. a lot of that pressure off of Lamar Jackson. You know, but. Yep. This team, again, so you know, they're so good. I don't see him missing the playoffs. This is one of those mm-hmm. teams that are gonna make it. I think here. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna say for the for the uh, Ravens. And finally, here we've got the 0 and 2 Cincinnati Bengals. Um. Joe again, they almost pulled out that victory. It was so oh, close, they had just it. within ah. a margin, fighting some of the the penalties, and then also at the end. Um. Again, it was pass interference. We can't deny that it no, was right there. It was it. within seconds of a hit. And uh, that's how it goes sometimes. And that's how yeah. some of these teams, excuse me, uh, get these victories like the Chiefs and stuff, you know, just little yeah. mental errors, just yeah. enough to get them there. Yeah. Um, I mean, so exactly. And this Bengals team, you know, that Joe Burrow definitely looks better in this game too, but they are missing Joe Mixon. You know what I mean? You know, not having that bell cow of a running mm-hmm. back there for them that helps balance out the offense. And that is a yeah. major key here for this team. Yeah, you know, that this is a team that relied a lot on Joe Mixon, and I don't think they really realized just how good he was for them. And they, they thought that they could replace him with a, a free agent signing of Zach Moss, and they have a rookie, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Brown, who, mm-hmm. when he's 100% healthy, Chase he's Brown. Yep. Yep. Chase Brown. 
He's yep, really yep. good. Really good. But again, he's they're not Joe Mixon. And and Joe Mixon right now is having one hell of a season after two weeks with Houston Texans and helping them win games. So uh I think that's at one, that's one kind of like big loss that they have, and they haven't been able to come back from it. You also got to think T Higgins is still not playing for them. Um, mm-hmm. He's still w- waiting to come back. Uh, Jamar Chase isn't a hundred percent either. Like he played with a, a illness in week one and wasn't a hundred percent. And then in week two, I don't even know if the dude's healthy yet because it, it seems like this team is limited because of the fact that they don't have the weapons they had before. Like they have Jamar Chase. It's all well and good, but guess what? Defenses shift their coverage over to his side that not only are they double teaming him every snap, but there's, they get the coverage shifted over to that side because they're not worried Mm -hmm. about, um, they're not worried. They're not worried about any of their other receivers that that they have. You know, Mike, Mike Kosicki has has done a good job so far with the, the Bengals you know, new, newly signed tight end for them. But again, he's not a wide receiver. You need more weapons to help them spread the ball around. Uh, and again, we talk about Joe Mixon not being there. Tyler Boyd, like he's another guy that was on that team that was a veteran, a guy that would kind of move the chains for them. And now he's, he's not there anymore. He's in Tennessee. So they're going through a, a readjustment period with this team where – they don't have everybody at their disposal just yet, but when they do, I feel like they're going to kind of get back on track, and um, and they'll figure some things out. Like like we yeah. saw in week one, we saw the Bengals, like you mentioned, Jim, about how late of a start they have every season. They are usually struggle the beginning part of the season, and then they figure it out, and here they here they are, you know, storming for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that that uh, historical type of record that they have in the beginning of the year it's just kind of it's the thing that they do so yeah yeah they are who we thought they were that's right it looks like um when they get the pieces back that they need and everyone is on the same page that that this team has the capability to kind of get back into that race get and and make a push uh for the playoffs Mm -hmm. i don't think it's time to panic for Bengals fans i know Week one was frustrating for them. And week two, they were just, they had it. It was just a couple of dumb mistakes on the defensive side of the ball that kind of restricted them to get a W. Yeah. Yeah. And again, they've got a few bit of injuries here um, on the defensive and the interior, um, but they're looking to play uh, in BJ Hill and um, who else was it? Uh, Sheldon Rankins. well, mm-hmm. one thing I would like to who's been out injured is Chris Jenkins. I was excited to see this kid get out there and play this year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he was hurt out of college to too, so yeah, they're still yeah, waiting. They're still waiting on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think one thing also I would like to see on the offense side of the ball, uh, Ia Sevis, I think missed a bunch of different plays where he could have had the you know some catches in the last game here against the Chiefs that would have help put them that game away multiple times and, and he just missed yeah. it. I would like to see Jermaine Burton with his big playability. I think that he has get more involved in the offense. When you're talking about receivers and not having a T Higgins and things like that. Mm-hmm. I think I would like to see uh Jermaine Bur- Burton, you know, step up a little bit here. Yeah. Jermaine Burton had one kind of like highlight play, had a catch for 47 yards and that was it. Mm-hmm. And that's like, it. Yeah, Been only it, targeted it, twice it, though in this season. Yeah. It, my thing too, is I, I think with Trenton Irwin, He's mm-hmm. a he's a decent receiver, but I don't I, I think you should start Jermaine Burton over him. I, I think mm-hmm. that Burton gives you a more big play ability, and I think that's what they're lacking right now because they don't have T. Higgins. They don't have uh a complement opposite Jamar Chase right now. And I think mm-hmm. Burton they need to kind of implement. I agree with you, Jim. They need to implement him in, more into the offense to get yeah. to help them kind of spread the ball around and open up um the you know the, the plays and everything like that so this is a team again they're still kind of trying to figure figure it out find their way because it is different this year for them you know they don't yeah. have the same personnel that they that they used to have especially receiving and in mm-hmm. and, and the backfield so they'll, they'll figure it out the, the, they're on their way um i think you saw yeah. you saw uh the game against the chiefs you saw 
the Bengals team that we were hoping to see in week right. one. Right. And minus a couple, like I said, minus a couple of bad, you know, um, bad plays on the defensive side of the ball for the Bengals. Yep. They had the game one. They would have won the game, mm-hmm. but it was a couple of mistakes and penalties that they got to help the chiefs, you know, get down to the field. So uh, they're right there. They're yep. right there. It's just, the, they'll, they'll get back on track. I got no worries about the Bengals right now. All right, here we go. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the type of games that you got to, if you're that close to a win too, you got to get those wins. Cause sometimes that's, what's going to make the difference yeah. when it comes playoff time, whether you're right. in or you're out. Uh, I think the, 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 the Bengals still have a shot. Cause like you even said, they've done this multiple times and this mm-hmm. is what they do. So, and the way yeah. this, uh, conference maybe starts to pan out, they, they could sneak in here, you know, um, all right, so there, you, there's the zero uh, and two teams that we think uh, we looked at all of them, and then we've said it whether they can make the playoffs or not. You know, it was a handful, you know, but yeah. like maybe three or four. Uh, yeah. Besides that, you know, the, it, their season's pretty much done for a few of these teams, and we'll see what they do to help develop, you know, and, and how that develops throughout the season, actually, too. Or yeah, or see if they make any changes too. Yeah, because with these injuries that or guys that have been missing from the lineup. You got to wonder, like, are they going to make a move? Are they going to bring someone in? Like, uh, it's it's interesting to see how every team uh, goes about their everyday, you know, running their running their organization. Because yeah. some teams are quick to add a player as soon as the guy gets hurt. They're like, oh, we got to add someone else to help us, you know, keep this train moving. And then there's other teams that are very patient. They kind of they don't make any drastic moves. They they kind of wait to see how let it marinate and, and wait to see if they really need to or not. So we'll see how uh, the teams handle injuries the teams handle. Maybe even production is lacking. So it'll be interesting to see how these Owen two teams, if they're able to turn it around or are they going to still kind of fall down the rabbit hole? Yep. All right. So now it's comes to the pick time. Week three is upon us, Joe. Um, last week yeah. was a little rougher here, but you know, hey, we're still in it. We're still doing pretty good. Um, I gotta, say, now, I gotta say that uh, last week, you know, I almost was <laughs> heartbroken. I, uh, I placed a bet, and oh. it was for, uh, I picked seven or eight players. Any, they can score any a touchdown anytime, right? Guess what happened? What? One of them didn't one of them got Cooper cup got injured. Oh, anyway. Yeah. So just him, I hit on everybody else. Oh, it was a, listen, hold on. It was a dollar bet, right? Mm-hmm. Dollar bet. I would have won $1,400. If Holy Cooper really? Cup, yeah. If Cooper cup, uh, played and scored a touchdown. Wow. So that stinks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear so, that. But it's okay. <laughs> yes. There's always this week, right, guys? That's right. That's and right. Hey, and the, your investment wasn't a whole lot, so you're okay. Nah, nah. Yeah, so yeah. I never go. I, you know, that's it's like Iggy that, says. You don't know what you got. You know. Yeah, I, I never go crazy with with, yeah. with betting, but uh, I know I know a few pl- people that are just they're they like just good it. at it, and yeah. they they go they spend they a lot of money, and I'm just like I'd never do that. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Thanks, guys, for tuning in right now. Appreciate you guys. The Blitz Nation is live and in charge. And uh, we just got to say thanks for checking our shows out. Thanks for thanks for liking them. Make sure you subscribe. Share it, actually. Head over to YouTube. You can share it at Grumblings Media. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. We will react to your comment. That's what this show is about, being interactive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but really appreciate everybody. And also... You can head over to YouTube. You can head over to rumble.com. You can also take us on the go anywhere you get your podcasts. Bring us along. Thank you guys so much. All right. Week three picks. You know what? I'm going to put up the music this time. How about that, Joe? Oh, I put some here music down now. here for the picks. I'm going to get fancy. Now down it's here. time to get serious. I didn't know what any of this stuff is, but I'm going to, I'm just going to pick a random <laughs> one. How about that, Joe? We're just oh, going to do a random go. one. See what this, this sounds like. Good. This ought to be good. All right. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right. Let's do it. We're just going to loop it. All right, let's go. Here we go. Here's the picks. Oh, yeah, I like it. All right. (laughs) 
Yeah, we got Thursday night. We got the New England Week Patriots. Three. And, yes, uh, the New England Patriots and the Jets. Uh, Patriots again look pretty strong at times. You know, they're they're surprising me. I, you know, they're they're putting up fights against these these teams here. They are. Um, yeah, so Thursday they're playing night. for their coach and everything too. So, but Thursday night, the Jets uh, again still don't look like uh, you know. I'm, I'm hoping they would with Aaron Rodgers. Still, he looks a little off. Uh, uh, better than the first week though. This week though, he definitely looked yeah, better be than expected. that. Um, but we're able to pull out a tough victory here. Um, but now here they are home against the Patriots, a rival. I think the Jets being here at home with Aaron Rodgers a third week together. They're going to kind of help get some stuff done, but I would like to see that defense play better than they have, though, too. We talk about them being a top-five defense. They haven't exactly looked like it in the last these last uh, first two weeks here. No, you know, and, and that's kind of like it's disappointing a little bit. You know, I fully expected this Jets defense to kind of, like, take over and even, like, hold teams down below, like, you know, 17 points. Like, I was really expecting that and and, and allow Aaron Rodgers and the offense to kind of, like, just completely dominate uh, whoever they were facing. But it hasn't been like that so far. And I know it's only been two weeks, but this is a team that I, I feel like is going to continue to get better as the season progresses. I, I do like Aaron Rodgers. And this is the thing, too, we touched on in training camp. Like, oh, where's Aaron? Oh, he's on vacation. Like, he's just not here. Well, this did affect on the chemistry issue that, that we talked about, and it's showing right now in the season. You, you, you usually correct those things in, in practice and correct them in, in preseason games. Now it's regular season, so now it's kind of like they're, they're playing catch-up as they play their game. So Aaron Rodgers gets uh, going into week three is going to be better. Like We already see the, the connection between him and Garrett Wilson. He's actually spread the ball around a little bit more in week two mm-hmm. and, and utilized down Lazard, you know, u- utilizes uh, Tyler Conklin, u- utilize Isaac Bruce out of the backfield, or not Isaac Bruce, Jesus, Brees Hall. Brees Hall. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Sorry. but uh, you know, you're starting to see this offense have an identity that they didn't have in week one. So I really do like the Jets. They're, they're going to be home against the Patriots. And – the Patriots, it's interesting because this is a team that I was concerned about their offensive line going into the regular season. I was concerned about Jacoby Brissett as the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And defense I wasn't concerned with. They'd still have that really yeah. good defense. Uh, but, mm-hmm. again, does that Patriots offense hold up now against the Jets' defense? So, I really like this game. I think it's going to be a close one, actually, because it is an in-division uh, type of game. So they know each other very well, but I think the Jets are going to come away with the win at the end. All right. I'm going to go with the Jets as well. Here we go. Sunday, uh, the New York football giants and the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns at home, uh, looked better, uh, the second week here, uh, the oh. giants again, look better too, as well, but facing this Jim Schwartz defense right here and Deshaun Watson hoping to get a little better and get back. It seemed like again, when he was controlling the ball in the red zone, looked pretty good too. Right. Um, yeah. So I expect the giants to uh, play hard, but not enough to do anything against this, <laughs> this team here. Uh, I like the Browns here at home. Yeah. But I mean, I fully expected you to go with the team opposite of your giants yes, every exactly. single week. Every week. And we're going to con- we're going to continue that trend for myself as well. I'm going to go with the Browns in this one. Uh, I did like week one looked terrible for Cleveland. Like they couldn't do anything right. Week two looked way better. And week three, maybe they continue that that production. Maybe they continue uh, their success. So uh, I'm going to go with Cleveland. I think that, again, like just you, like you mentioned, Jim Schwartz, that that – defense they're just constantly they're aggressive they keep coming after you from different angles uh and i i'd like to think that deshaun watson will continue to get better going into week three week two was a little bit better but he needs to become much better as the season progresses uh and they're without david and joku which i think is also a factor uh in this game but that just means spread the ball out to jerry judy spread the ball out to omari Mm -hmm. cooper Mm -hmm. like utilize your other weapons so we'll see how this game goes but i'm gonna go with the browns in this one all right next the chicago bears and the indianapolis colts 
Um, Colts again, you know, 0 2, one of those 0 2 teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Bears pull out that victory week one. Um, but again, the Caleb Williams not looking the <laughs> best. On, the offensive line not looking on, very good. Hold on, the Bears didn't pull it out. Where Levis yeah, gave yeah. him that win. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I was I was being nice about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, but again, you know, the defense, you know, with the with the win. Uh, so again, we we talked about you know not having uh, DeForest Buckner in this game. That's gonna be uh, a big point here for for the Indianapolis Colts because one thing we did see out of Caleb Williams is his elusiveness. He can get out of the pocket, make some plays with his legs. But like you had talked about with me when we were watching some of the game last week too, it's almost to a default where it almost like uh, he's doing it prematurely. It's like, you know, stay in the pocket, trust some things, look at your receivers, get it to the guy. Or then, you know, if you got a time clock, get out of there. Sometimes he just wants to go for the scramble quick if he sees any kind of pressure. And then he gets scrambling all around and it could get him in trouble because he will run 10 yards backwards, then sideways, then backwards, then forwards, then backwards, you know. So, um, and that's how you could get decked to, you know, and, and be in a, in a tough position here. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a tight game. It's going to be close. Um, but, oh, man, I think I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears on this one. Okay. Uh, the Bears have a really good defense, and that's kind of really what's helping them stay in games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caleb Williams, to your point, Jim, in week one, Caleb Williams averaged over four seconds of holding onto the ball, not throwing it. So he was holding on to the ball way too long. You should not be holding it on. You should you get that ball right. needs to come out of your hand, whether you get outside the pocket and throw it away, or you got to get it to your receiver. The game of of football at the NFL level is so much faster, and it's taking him by surprise, I feel like. Not only is he being asked to do things he was never asked to do in college by reading the defense and and trusting and going through your progressions and all of that, um, he's got talent. There's no doubt about it. That's why he was drafted number one overall. I haven't been a huge fan of Caleb Williams just because of the things that he's being asked to do now versus college. And it seems to be showing more times than not that um, sometimes he gets in his head. Sometimes he's unsure of where to go with the football. And But in week two, he got much better. I will give him credit for that. Like week two, he was getting the ball out of his hands under three seconds, I believe, just over two under three, which is kind of like a nice sweet spot that you would like your quarterback to do. But that was attributed to the offensive play calling in week two. They were trying to get the ball out of his hands very quickly, and they did an excellent job at it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like going against the Colts, um, even though DeForest Buckner is not there, that defense is still good. Like it's, it's not anything to, you know, just kind of glance over. Their offense with Anthony Richardson, he's kind of similar to Caleb Williams, where he's got a cannon for an arm. He's got that mobility. But again, he's still holding on to the ball at times. He's not he's not getting the ball to, to out of his hands quick enough. So I feel like this game is going to be a terrible game to watch for one. <laughs> uh, but overall, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Colts mm-hmm. um because Oh, this other thing I wanted to mention, too, is that Caleb had a comment in one of the interviews after the game, basically saying that um, basically saying that he's done. He's basically uh, just kind of saying, like, he's done such a good job and kind of talking about himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. About like saying, oh, you know, not not that. Oh, my defense has been playing amazing or uh, giving any credit to the offensive line or. Like it's it's just more like oh yeah that's what I do that's what he said he goes that's oh, what I yeah. do I I he goes that's what I do I I break uh, milestones what oh, milestone Jesus. did you break <laughs> because as oh, far as I'm man. concerned bro you haven't even broke 200 passing yards yet yeah. like yeah. I don't know he, it, it's just the the ego the yeah. I, I just I don't know. But I think that, that this game is not going to be a fun game to watch. So if you're going to watch it, don't watch it. Watch something else. Uh, there you but go. It's going to be messy. I think it's going to be so messy that um, 
it's not going to be very high scoring. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, but I th- I'm going to give the edge to the Colts just because. Why not? Okay, <laughs> sometimes that's all you need. Uh, the the uh, Houston Texans and the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota playing at home. Sam Darnold looks pretty good here. Again, that team all together. Um, Houston again. You know, uh, pulling one. out a close win uh, last uh, week. Um, they really tried to give them the the refs were really helping the Bears on that one too. If you really watch that game, yeah. they were really yeah. trying to keep the Bears yeah. into this game. Yeah. Uh, to yeah, it seemed like NBC was like, listen, guys, this is on national television. Make this competitive. Oh, uh, and they did. That's so. the, yeah, that's the other thing too. Is they tried to they put the quarterbacks up with the stats with yeah. like Caleb Williams, and it's like there's no comparison. No like, comparison. He wasn't right? he wasn't yeah, good. CJ Stroud was on the other yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah. you guys tried to make a case and try to hype the game up. But yeah, dude, it was clearly one sided. Like the, he didn't have a good game. Right. So I think this game, though, is going to be really tight. I think Minnesota has been pulling off some good wins here. Um, but it's here's a litmus tough. test, I think, for them, you know, because I because Houston's a very good team. I'm yeah, going to go with the uh, Texans, um, but yeah. I'm interested to see how Minnesota responds to this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I dude, I, I'm I'm baffled. I don't know what mm-hmm. to do with this, this game because it's such a tough one to pick. It is. It could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if either team wins, just like I said with the Niners and Vikings. But this, I just feel like the Texans, they're on such a roll right now. Yeah. And it, it's hard to pick against them. But man, I'm kind of getting that Sam fever, baby. Like, I think I'm going to go fever? with the Vikings on this one. Oh, go Vikings. And yeah. Uh, I, like that defense. Have a big thing. I like the defense, man. The defense has definitely surprised me. Like, the Vikings defense yeah. is playing really good football. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this, like if, if Justin Jefferson is to miss this game, I think that's a deciding factor. I think then it would be going the other way, the Texans, because Sam, uh, Sam Darnold and the Vikings, they need him to be available. Yeah. If he's not there and you don't have, I don't even know if Jordan Addison is going to be available. He was out last week. Mm -hmm. Um, but if he, if he doesn't have Jefferson at the least, I I think it's going to be tough for the Vikings to win. Uh, I would go. I would say that I would go Texans if Jefferson doesn't play. All right. But I'm, right, I'm going to go. With, I'll go with the Vikings. All right. Next, the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Eagles, Ooh. you should have had a victory here, and you couldn't get it done. Now you go marching into the Saints territory, New Orleans, and New Orleans is looking hot right now. Like if I did power rankings, I'm putting New Orleans at number one. You know, it's funny they yeah. saw them move up. I think sixteen spots. I think on NFLs or something. Still to right. like number eight for some reason, <laughs> uh, which that makes me think again. How how the how do these power rankings work? Because I thought it was like up. whatever team's looking good right now. They had Chiefs at number one. I don't get yeah. that right now. You know, I mean, they don't look very good right now. So where's the power ranking? But no. Anyways, uh, opinionated. They, you know that they look really good. Here's another good uh, test for them. The Philadelphia Eagles, a really good team. Uh, mm-hmm. But Philadelphia, again, hasn't been really dominant either, really. They've been in some tight games and pulling mm-hmm. out a victory the week before, and then, then this mm-hmm. one that went off the hook. Um, so, Well, I'm you got to remember, too, uh, you got to remember, too, that A.G. Brown wasn't available last game. Right, and, he wasn't. And I feel, like, I feel like that was the deciding that factor. That is a good factor. They had A.J. Brown, like, there's yeah. not a, but no doubt about it. I think, I think they win that game. I don't think they win it by a landslide by any means. I think it still would have been close. But yeah. I feel like they would have scored a couple more times than they did. Right. But I'm going to go with the home team on this one. I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints. You talk about you feeling that Sam Darnold fever. Yeah. I'm like in the Saints, man. Yeah. You know what? I can't go. I can't go against my guy. I like. I, I love Derek Carr, and I and I, I've been trying to prove to everybody that he is a legitimate quarterback. He's a top ten quarterback. He's playing like a top five in two weeks. So. I'm just saying this is this is who he has always been. He he never was a guy that was like, oh, he's not good. He's not good enough to be in the league or start or whatever. He's showing you what he is. He's got a good offensive coordinator finally with Clint Kubiak, who's coming up with these crazy formations, these crazy plays with all of his players. And the defense has been playing stellar football. Yeah. Again, Marshawn Lattimore, I believe he missed last week. I want to see if he's healthy enough to play in this week, but even so, like that that team overall is playing on all cylinders. I love what they got going on. Philadelphia Eagles, 
like you mentioned, they are a really good team. They're very stout on both sides of the football. There's really not a lot of weaknesses with that team. I want, I'm want. i curious to see if Brown is going to be back this week. I expect him to be. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Saints right now because they are red hot. And they are not only playing great football, but they're also going to be playing at home, which is going to give them some extra juice. I'm going mm-hmm. Saints. All right. Next, we've got the Los Angeles Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh somehow 2-0 oh, and o out of all this. Uh, this is going to be a running attack, this game. Yeah. This is what this yeah. is. This is going to be running on both sides. You're going to see okay. Najee Harris on the other side, and you're going to see, yeah. you know, the Chargers on the other doing their thing. So, yeah. J.K. Dobbins, you know. So, um, I think this is going to be a close game. Uh, I think Pittsburgh has kind of sh- backdoored in the games. So, mm-hmm. I'm not believing them in this one. I'm going to back out. Even though they do play really well at home, I'm going to ride with the Chargers on this one. Yeah. Okay. So what? Oh, they're in Pittsburgh this week. In huh? Pittsburgh. Yeah. Hmm. So, but like you mentioned, it's going to be running, running football. Uh, Justin Herbert, he was banged up last week. It seems like he's going to be good to go this week. Mm-hmm. So there's no real issue there. Uh, it's it basically comes down to defense. Like who yeah. whose defense do you think is going to win? You know, right. who's going to force the other opposing offense to make a mistake? Or turn the ball over uh, to get it back to their team. I'm not still. I'm still not sold on Justin Fields. I know right. that. I know that they've they won, but really, he hasn't really done anything. Yeah. You know, and and, and mm-hmm. I'll tell you this right now. Mike Tomlin cannot wait until Russell Wilson's back. Yeah, um, yeah. He just, he just can't yeah. wait. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's going to be week four, not week three. So. Uh, he is tr- he is tracking towards getting healthier. It seems like n- one more week will do it, and it'll be back. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Jim. I think the Chargers uh, are gonna. I think they j- they're gonna do just enough to get the W here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, again, yeah, that's the thing too. Uh, just Justin Herbert, yeah, he's been just playing it safe. He could only do that so long uh, until his time's up. And and like you said, Russell Wilson's gonna be coming back pretty soon. Um, the Denver Broncos and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I feel bad for the Broncos right here because, again, the way Tampa Bay is playing right now, and it's one week, you know, it's Mike Evans, those guys. This week it was Chris Godwin. I mean, and, you know, that defense, you know, yeah. is playing really well. I mean, it, yep. you know, the team that, you know, wasn't sure post Tom Brady what they're going to do, and they found Baker Mayfield, and look at this. They're just in the playoffs still, no matter what. Mm-hmm. There is no downtime. Yeah. Um, so they're playing really well. The Broncos again, learning with their young quarterback. He's going to make the mistakes here. It's going to be a rough road for him in this one. I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I like, I like Baker Mayfield. I think mm-hmm. he's going to be, uh, he's, he's just playing at a high level right now. He's doing a great job. He's continuing where he left off from last season, basically. Right. And right. he's got a healthy offense around him chris godwin is going crazy every week mike Mm -hmm. evans is doing his thing like everybody's getting a piece of the pie rashad white is surprisingly doing big things in the backfield and they got that that young rookie in bucky irving who man what a freaking tough dude to tackle in the open field week one he showed what he could do week two they didn't really use him that much i'm hoping that they kind of put him in the offense this week I got the Buccaneers hands down. Like, I don't think the Broncos would stand a chance against this team. And usually when I say that, the Broncos somehow win. But uh, I, I, I I can't see it happening. I think the Buccaneers are too good. And the defense is playing out of this world as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, next up, we've got the Green Bay Packers at the Tennessee Titans. Is this the week Jesus. that the Titans pull out a victory here and Malik Willis, you know, doesn't do very well for them, you know? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, the Titans are going to try and be, stay competitive here, but that Green Bay Packers defense is really good. They're going to kind of go with the same game plan, I think, try and keep it, you know, just out of his hands as much as they can, give it to Josh Jacobs to try to run on this Tennessee Titans defense and this team. Um, and I think they will be able to do this here. Um, and I'm like in the uh, Green Bay Packers. Tennessee defense is no slouch, especially they were no, one of the better there. teams last season in defending mm-hmm. against the run. I feel like this is going to play into the hands of the Tennessee defense. This is exactly what they want. This is going to be the game plan. What 
what they were like uh, last week, you know, what was supposed to happen. And then you got this week with the Titans. The Titans are no, they're, they're a smart football team. They're, they're going to have a really good defensive game plan. I feel like they're going to force Malik Willis to beat them by passing. They're going to try to shut Josh Jacobs down. I know that's not easy, but I think yep. they have the, the personnel to do it. And that's got to be the game plan. I think that gives them a shot to win this game. I, I, I Again, I understand Green Bay did what they did last week. But I don't believe in Malik Willis. I think that's going to be the Achilles heel of this offense this week. They're playing a much better defense in Tennessee. I think that they don't. I think in this game, Will Levis isn't a moron and just yeah. hands the ball off to the other defense this week. So I think that's going to be the difference. I feel like Tennessee will uh, get their first W this week. And Malik, Rob Malik Willis of getting his revenge game. Right. Of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, you know what? You know what? He might actually, like, the, again, by forcing him to throw, they know him. Like, that's the yeah. thing, too, is that yeah. that team knows him inside and out. So they know his tendencies. They know, like, all the all the backstory on him. So it's like they almost got an advantage by knowing the quarterback that well, uh, yep. where they might set some things up and, like, oh, he goes for this all the time, and then there's another pick. You know what I mean? So yep. we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But I, Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm hoping for the Titans to get their first win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be nice. Um, the Carolina Panthers and the Vegas Raiders. Raiders coming off a big win against the uh, the the Ravens. Um, again, can't put their foot off the gas here though. To defeat a team mm -hmm. here, you know, now right. led by Andy Dalton at the helm here for the Carolina yeah. Panthers. Raiders, I think, do really play really well at home though too. Um, I think Max Crosby is going to get uh, multiple sacks in this game. Um, I'm going with the Raiders on this one. Not much, I think, to say. I'm interested to see how Andy Dalton uh, can can lead this team. I think he'll do better than what Bry uh, Bryce Young has yeah. done, but uh, not enough against this defense. Yeah, I feel like Andy Dalton will get the ball of his hands quicker. He's going to be more yeah. decisive with the football, uh, you know, and keep trying to move the move the ball down the field and not try to force anything, you know. Right. So, but I gotta say, the Panthers. Their defense, they don't have Derrick Brown anymore. They mm. traded away Brian Burns. And this secondary, it, it, let me tell you, it, it just looks like a mess. Offensively, they haven't been able to protect the quarterback. Andy Dalton might be in for a rude awakening because, mm -hmm. like you said, you think Max Crosby is going to get a lot of sacks. I think Christian Wilkins gets two in he this knows. game. Like he, I think this defense overall is going to go off. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it, and then it's going to just allow more opportunity for Gardner Minshew and the offense to kind of move the ball down the field and score. If the Raiders lose this game, that just throws up a whole other big question mark about this team. I got to say, this is you're playing the worst team in football right now, or at least one of the worst. Of the uh, worst you you got to win this game if you're the Raiders. So, yeah, I have to go Raiders with this one. All right, here we go. And the Miami Dolphins um, with Huntley or Skylar Thompson, we don't know yet. I guess you know right now. <laughs> Let's make it a question mark. It's uh, gonna be. I think it's gonna be Skylar Thompson because Huntley yeah. totally literally just got there. I don't see them throwing him in that fast. Maybe next week, but uh, not this week. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got the Miami Dolphins and the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle, though, again, man, they just been. It's in Seattle, though, right? Oh, it is in Seattle. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Seattle's defense is going to be licking their chops, mm -hmm. man. They got a new quarterback there. They're going to try to mess with him. They're going to get after him. Uh, they better hope that they're going to – they better hope – Miami better hope they can run. They can yeah. run that rock because if they can't, they're in for a long day. I got Seattle all day long. Seattle is also another one of these teams that are playing very well. They're executing, especially offensively. Geno Smith, we're seeing the Geno Smith from two years ago, not last season. and. Uh, they, they got they got things moving along there in Seattle, so I got the Seahawks in this one. Yeah, and it's tough because the fact that that Tua makes that much of a def uh, 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 difference here for the yeah. team. I mean, that's it's everything started. here. But so yeah. you'd hope that Mike McDaniel can uh, can game plan around this, and Devin Achan you know, can can do something here and just run mm -hmm. the football efficiently and get that going. Um, but it is tougher to play in Seattle. You got the crew there, that the whole all the fans and everything. It's going to get loud. <laughs> And they're definitely going to test uh, Skyward Thompson. 
So real quick, there's a stat that just popped up. Uh, it said top 10 NFL quarterback passing touchdown leaders as follows. Saints, Derek Carr with five. Bucks, Baker Mayfield what? with five. Mm. Cardinals, Kyler Murray with four. Vikings, Sam Darnold with four. Wow. Jets, Aaron Rodgers with three. And Chargers, Justin Herbert with three. And none other than Jalen Hurts with the Eagles has three as Man. well. That list sounds like it's a list from like four years ago. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, is that funny? It's like the upside down is is up, you know, and things like that. Uh, good for this them. This is though. why we love this that. game. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. The, 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 there you go. It's the little guys. We were root for the little that's guys. Right. Um, so I think I'm gonna f- go with Seattle too, just because again the Skyward Thompson being in there, yeah, um, being playing it hey. safe here, and Seattle does play well at home. Um, Detroit Lions and the Arizona Cardinals. This could be a trap game, I think. Again, here we be. go. The trap it game here because be. Arizona, <laughs> if they come out flying again and punching you in the mouth, I don't know how the Detroit Lions respond in here because what they've done the last, you know, last two weeks, you know, it was it was it was tough to, to gauge on what the Rams really are because they just lost to the Cardinals, uh, and, and the the Lions just lost, you know, so. What are we gonna? What are we seeing here? What team? You would hope that Dan Campbell again gets these guys in the locker room, has a good pep talk, and say, "Hey, listen, we have what it takes to get there. We need to beat teams like this. Let's fix, you know, our shit and get stuff to go in here. Let's get it back going here." Um, so, I'm worried about this game. I'm worried that Arizona is going to get out on top, and then Detroit's going get, to get disheveled. You know, they've seen they've done it last year in the playoffs too. It's kind of scary. Yeah. But that being said. Arizona's defense, I think, still sucks. And I think Jared Goff can be able to navigate well with the weapons that they have. And like you said, get Sam Laporta involved. I'm going to go with the Lions here to be safe. But I would not be surprised if the Cardinals pull a sneaky one out here. I'll tell you right now, I will be surprised if the Cardinals win this game because mm-hmm. there's no reason the Detroit Lions should lose to this team. No, the Rams. Listen, the, the Lions beat the Rams at fair and square. And this is a team, if the Lions are going to be the team that they want themselves to be, they got to win games like this. The Cardinals should not be on the same football field with them. They should not, it should not be down to the wire or anything like that. The Lions need to handle business and take care of it. Like you just said, Sam Laporta, this could be Sam Laporta's breakout game that we've been waiting for. This really could be Uh, because the Cardinals, like they've done enough to beat the two teams that they did, but now... Now they're playing a team that everybody anticipates winning the division and pushing into deep in the playoffs. So I, I think the Lions get this win easy. All right. Uh, next up, we got the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys here. Wow. Ooh. All right. Dallas, will they lose back to back at home? <laughs> or do we see Baltimore Ravens going 0 3 right here, Joe? Oh, man. This, this is exciting. How about this game? Yeah. It's gotta be nah, game this, of the week right here. Uh, <laughs> it's gotta be. It is. It is. is this it? is game of the week. It's gotta be because look at the other games. They're kind of like. No, this is it. This is the game of the week. <laughs> it's in Dallas too. It's in Dallas. So, yeah. Oh man, Baltimore traveling to Dallas. What's that gonna look like? I. You know what? This is the thing. It's these games right here are very weird to decipher because. Neither team plays each other very often. They see each other once every four years or something like that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting Interesting to see how each team attacks each other, it, especially in the beginning. It's going to be kind of like that touch and go feeling out period. Like we're not going to do anything crazy yet in the first quarter. And then you'll start to see it pick up one way or the other for each team. Uh Man, I, I can't imagine the Ravens going 0-3 right now. Uh, even though they're going to Dallas, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go with the Ravens in this one. I, th- I think Lamar Jackson gives the Ravens defense enough fits uh, by ch- trying to chase him down. I, I feel like the team is going to utilize Derrick Henry more in this matchup and try to just punish the D-line of the Cowboys. I, I think yeah. that's what it's going to come down to. I think it's going to, the Ravens are going to try to like have those long sustaining drives like they usually like to do, finish off with touchdowns, and then just send immense pressure at Dak Prescott. So yeah. 
that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going with Baltimore in this one. And the Ravens getting, or not the Ravens, the Cowboys get another loss. Yeah, and this is what I'm looking at too, because what, what do the Cowboys do? They do that pass rush, things like that. I think having Lamar Jackson back there kind of nullifies that. Negates he's, yeah. He's going to step up in that and then take off. So are they going to have somebody try and spy him? Sure, I'm sure they are going to try and have somebody spy him here. But sure. Yeah. They want him to possibly contain, but I don't think that's like um, Micah Parsons' deal. You know, he's going to try and get some moves, swim in, cut in. Try and get at Lamar. Lamar's going to get open and make some big plays with his legs. And then the Cowboys, again, are going to start reeling. And I think it's going to be an issue here. Like you said, then bring it back with a little more Derrick Henry. And mm-hmm. the Cowboys don't have a running game. It, it's it's not. No. It's not no they don't. <laughs> so, again, they're going to drop back to start trying to throw here to get into the game again. And then they're going to run into problems. I agree with you here, too. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens here. And the Dallas okay. goes one and two and makes that division tighter. Right? I want that. <laughs> oh man! Imagine that and be it could be the <laughs> NFC least again, possibly. Ooh. All right. Next, yeah. we got the San Francisco 49ers who are a little banged up here, and the Rams who are also banged up here. So again, this would potentially would have been probably one of the games of the week. Yes. Uh, yes. But again, uh, Rams missing their top two receivers. Uh, Debo's injured. No Christian McCaffrey. Um, so it's rough. And then is is Nick Bosa going to be able to play? I know he was banged up, right? Uh, so. Nick Bosa, yeah, he's banged up. Jury's still out on him. It's only yeah. it's only Tuesday, mm-hmm. um, but Wednesday. So I think this is going to be tough. I mean, you know, why you think about it? Um, Rams again. I think they're going to do whatever they can to get back into this game and, and, and make it competitive. You'd hate to see the Rams go zero and three, uh, but you also look at the 49ers and the amount of personnel that they have, though, too, and, and Shanahan, and you got to say. Listen, they still got to be able to find out a way to win this one, um, you know, with who they have. They still have Ayuk. They still have George Kittle, you know, and I think Mason still looks pretty good, at, you know, for, for the young guys. So really good. Yeah. You know, I, I think I'm leaning towards the Rams, but I think I might just go towards the, the 49ers here on this one. Yeah. I mean, the Rams, like we didn't foresee them being 0-2 already in, in mm-hmm. this season. And the fact that they've lost not just Puka Nakua, not not just Cooper Cup, but they still don't have Tyler Higby there. Yep. They they're still tr- they're trying to be a running or a balanced team that runs, but to, to kind of control the ball and all that and and tick down tick down time. But man, when you when you drop your your top two targets, uh, that's that's hard to overcome. Like it can be done, but it's really hard to overcome. So. I think that, like, for I don't have major concerns for the Rams, but for the 49ers, like, this is another team. Like, they've been beaten up. Like, they don't have Christian McCaffrey still. Uh, Debo Samuel might miss the game. You know what I mean? Like, I think he might be even out uh, already, but mm-hmm. uh, I could be wrong about that. But I did hear the fact that he's been banged up and they're not sure if he's going to be able to play. Uh, so for the 49ers, they're also another kind of wounded duck coming into this game and they got to figure out ways to win, uh, for the 49. I think the 49ers end up winning this game, but it's probably going to be an ugly game for both teams. Like I, I don't foresee one just destroying the other. So I'll go with the Niners in this one. All right. Here we go. Just a couple more here. We've got Sunday night football, the Kansas city chiefs and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, like we said early on, we were talking about the Chiefs. Um, very opportunistic. They've been able to um, pull out a couple of victories here, but Patrick Mahomes not exactly looking the best. Isaiah Pacheco not there because of being injured, so they bring in uh-huh. Kareem Hunt. Um, again, I don't even still think he starts. On all cylinders, and I don't think no, I don't think he does either. I think um, that kid, that kid starts that that uh, that Carson uh, Steele. Yeah, I think uh, Atlanta, they really got to kind of come out here firing. You know, I think they really got to yeah. get things going, get the run game going, really, you know, and mm-hmm. be John Robinson. That'll open it up for Kirk Cousins stuff. He plays better, you know, after, you know, having a good running game, get some play action yeah. passing going. Yeah. Um, he got his, uh, you know, big game, you know, this past Monday night. So uh, the Atlanta playing at home, Kansas City, I would say backdooring into some of these games. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons at home to sneak out a victory against the defending champions. I'm surprised, Jim. I thought for sure you were going to go with the Chiefs. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. but uh, anyway, you're right. Like the the Chiefs haven't won any any. So I mean, there's only been two games. They haven't won yes. in a convincing way. I guess is the best right. way to put it. Uh, unlike what we've seen last season from them. So Atlanta Falcons, what they were able to do in Philly showed me the potential of this team like we we believed it was there before the season started we thought hey atlanta could be a dark horse maybe they push for the playoffs but last week you played a one of the premier teams in the nfc in the eagles and you went into their house and beat them mm -hmm. so that shows me that this falcons team is ready to make that push when you can beat a, a, a big time team like that, and now it doesn't get any easier because now you have to have, now you got to play Kansas City. So uh, Kirk Cousins, good on him for playing well in prime time and actually winning for once. Uh, but I, I like the Atlanta Falcons defense too. Like I said that in the offseason, they, they managed to yeah, they, bring together added. a very good secondary, all playing together, good chemistry. Matt Judon screaming off the edge to get after quarterbacks that's my thing is is how well can kansas city protect uh max or protect um mahomes versus mm -hmm. matt judon so mm -hmm. I, i'm curious to see how that all shakes out but again these are teams again this is another matchup where they have they don't face each other normally they don't know each other that well all they can go off of is is two weeks of football so I like Atlanta's chances in this one. I think that they're home. They're going to just kind of rock out. And, and, and of course, I'm going to root against the Chiefs. I'm picking the Falcons in this one. All right. We got two Monday night games here this week. So we're blessed with two. Uh, that's very oh, we exciting. are blessed with two? Well, kind of, I guess. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Two halves make one, maybe. So oh. I guess you're right. That makes sense. Uh, because one game is Jacksonville and Buffalo, and the other one is Washington and Cincinnati, which uh, yeah. they might turn into games a little bit, you know, on some of these. Um, right. Buffalo at home, they've been playing really well. You know, Josh Allen really turning it up. Uh, put down all the, the, the sayers about saying, hey, without Diggs, what is he going to do? You know, he seems like he's handling it well. Um you know, Shakir seems like he's getting hit. That's his go-to guy, but he also has the tight ends to get a dish too. So Buffalo seems fine right now. Jacksonville is the ones that's reeling. Their quarterback just said that they just suck. So I think uh, <laughs> the, the locker room, you know, might be a little down in this one for Jacksonville. And mm -hmm. they're going to go 0-3 on this one. I like to, uh, the Buffalo Bills to circle the wagons here at home. Yeah, the, you know, the, the Bills played so, so well in week two uh, against Miami. They dominated the Miami Dolphins. And... Uh, and I think that they're going to do the same thing with the Jaguars. I, I don't think that the Jaguars are playing well enough to compete with the Bills. And Bills' offense really is running through Josh Allen so far. So far, nobody as a receiver has stepped up enough to kind of claim the throne as the number one guy. We, we did expect Khalil Shakir to be that guy, but so far, no one's really kind of grabbed the crown and ran with it. So that's still up for grabs. The Bills and Josh Allen, we've seen them running a lot more, uh, and that seems to be working so far. I think that trend continues. The Bills are going to end up winning. They're home. It's tough to beat the Bills at home. Jaguars, because they're struggling and they got to go to Buffalo, I think the Bills get the W there. Yeah, and I want to say even last time that they did play, I think uh, the other Josh Allen, now Josh Hines Allen, uh, played really well. And I think the Jags upset him, but I don't see that happen because that was even in Jacksonville last time, too. And that was so, a different uh, a different, a different time team. altogether. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, next we've got the Washington Commanders and mm -hmm. the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati just couldn't get that one done in the last game mm -hmm. here. Um, Washington struggled they they were moving the ball against the giants they were moving it but again just get, get to the red zone installed out penalties they need to eliminate the penalties if they can do that yeah. they can really make places it, it, go places and do things because Jaden daniels even though he hasn't had a, a passing touchdown yet uh he's doing things with his legs too and getting out in the open one thing he mm -hmm. does need to do and they said it on the broadcast i think multiple times is get down young man get down <laughs> Uh, because you are only a buck 90 right now, uh, six something, and you're frail. You get take some of those big hits. We've seen that ruin some careers before. Uh, you were very elusive. You can get out in the open and make some plays with your legs, but make sure you slide 
um, so you can uh, get up and fight another day here. Uh, but despite the the Washington Commanders, how they're able to move against the Giants, it was the Giants. And this is the Cincinnati Bengals. I expect them to bounce back from last week where they should have had the win, and mm-hmm. they should be able to uh, handle the Commanders here. I like the Bengals. Yeah, for Washington, I saw a few of their or a couple of their games, and not all of it in its entirety, but like some of the mm-hmm. hits that I saw Jaden Daniels take, they really weren't even bone crushing or anything. But uh, I'm not. He got really a good concerned. one hit on it this past week, but yeah, I'm not really concerned with it. Uh, you know, at the time, I mean, I, in, at LSU, he did a good job of running out of bounds and sliding or whatnot. I, I think he picks and chooses whether he wants to take that hit or not, depending mm-hmm. on the situation. Uh, but yeah, you're right. He does need to protect his body. He doesn't want to get hurt, you know, while just kind of hanging in there or whatnot. But uh, for Jaden Daniels in Washington, I think the one thing that they struggled with last week was protection. It seemed like uh, the interior of that O-line is not upgraded like we once thought. Like they struggled to protect Jaden Daniels uh, last week. And I think that continues this week with the likes of Trey Hendrickson going to be coming after you know him, Sam Hubbard, uh, and everybody else. I think this is going to be a, a tough task for Washington alone. I think defensively for Washington, they've been struggling too. Like I, I thought that with the new additions that they made, they would have kind mm-hmm. of somehow come together and they would have played what they're playing terrible yeah. football. Yeah. So just with that alone in the Bengals, the fact that they lost to the Chiefs, they are super pissed right now. They know they shouldn't have lost that game. And now they're looking to just kind of go after the next team, which happens to be Washington. I think mm-hmm. Joe Burrow and company, they go out there, they execute every all the plays, and they play at a high level. Bengals get the win. All right, there you go. We agree on that one. There you go. There's our picks for week three, Joe. Uh, That's right. Who knows what will surprise us uh, this, this week? <laughs> you know, what we're going to get here. So, um. That's right. We don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything. Until the, that's why they play the games too, right, Joey? Yeah, they, everybody it's, looks good on hey, paper or whatever. In the, the, it's any given Sunday. That's why That's why that term is so true. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, all right, so before we head out, tell everybody one last time where they can find more shows like this one and uh, the audio yeah. versions too as well. Hey, Blitz Nation, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate all the support. Make sure next week... You, we need some more comments in the comment section. Make sure yeah, you drop been, down below, comment. We're going to react to the comment. We're if, Even if you have a question or you want to talk about something, we'll definitely do that for you guys. We're here for you guys all season long and all year long because football doesn't stop after the Super Bowl. We got all kinds of things to talk about. So make sure you tune in here every single Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you guys here next week. You can also head over to YouTube to help to support us a little little bit more. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. Make sure you share the video to everybody that you know. And as well, you can take us on the go and uh, with any podcast that you might be involved with. Make sure you hit the follow there as well. Jim, did you know something? What's up? That we have a website called grumblingsmedia.com that you can go to. (laughs) And check anything from sports, entertainment, political, all kinds of shows over there. Make sure you head over there. The QR code right there, right in that top corner. Just hold your phone up to it. There you go. Scan the scan the code. It'll take you right to grumblingsmedia.com. We can get, like Joe said, all the podcasts that are on there. We have political, we have baseball, we have uh baseball news, everything, basketball, everything you could possibly want. Check them out, memes. So go to the website. You'll get everything you possibly want. And thank you so much for joining us this time, this week. And we'll see you guys for the next one. Hey, everybody. This is Big John from Grumblings Media. And I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here. Totally free. Or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.